Despite the beautiful golden hair of Emmaus, we are back <laughs> for week four of our trip into the project Raise known. Her name. <laughs> Raise her name. <laughs> project known as Ember by Foundry Virtual Tabletop. This is a bittersweet day for us because this is uh, episode four and and the finale of our uh, of our little uh, a little dip into Ember. But uh, as you'll see, we are just scratching the surface of this insane project. Is a uh, about a week left in the Kickstarter. If for some reason you haven't uh, checked it uh, out yet, make sure you hit the link in the description. Head over there. Toss a couple bones to help make this project happen. Uh, we're so excited to be playing it. And uh, I don't know, I, this may be our last time playing in the studio, but I would be shocked if it's our last time playing it. Uh, though it may be our last time playing it with the founder and creator of Foundry <laughs> Virtual Tabletop, Andrew Clay. Yeah! Is back! What an honor. What an honor. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> It's been awesome uh, gaming with with you all these these four weeks, and I can't wait for this session. Uh, we'll see where we get it. Uh, I think you've gotten a real taste of uh, GMing for Troy and yeah. Skid and <laughs> yeah, Sydney. I, and so, what, would you give it like a Julius Caesar like? <laughs> no, it's been amazing. Four <laughs> okay. weeks. Yeah, all right. Up. I, well, uh, this an has honor. been an amazing experience, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I hope that y'all have been having as much fun as I have. Oh my god! Uh, oh yeah, so much fun. I mean, we continually. <laughs> It's just amazing how much we continue to discover in this thing, yeah. just even in this early going. Just before we went live uh, on the episode, <laughs> we're sitting here, we're getting set, we're like, oh, let's do some sound checks, testing the music, and I'm describing how beautiful the music is just on like the hold screen of uh, Ember on this, uh, on the VTT, where, on Foundry where we're at right now. And then you described how the music has been composed mm -hmm. to change with Whatever moon is in cycle. The positions of the moon. The position like of the moon slowly changes. And so you were like, so never again in the year, the calendar year, yeah. will this particular composition be playing in the background. It's yeah, that's right. Our, we have an amazing audio engine uh, and we have a brilliant composer doing all the music for Ember. And it's so cool, like assembling these compositions on the fly in the software based on what's happening in game. It's it's really, really cool stuff. Yeah, and great. Um, yeah, th that happens on this scene. This is kind of like the, I guess, like you said, sort of the landing screen, which evolves over time. But yeah, I'll put on some music. Yeah, yeah. yeah give me, give me some, give me some mood. Um, <laughs> but yes, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the Kickstarter. Uh, it's been an amazing and stressful and crazy ride. And we are <laughs> headed into the last week with as much excitement as uh, we had for week one. I mean, it, it's going to be amazing. Uh, the finish, you know, start strong, finish strong. That's kind of the guidance with Kickstarter. And so we're hoping that we can uh, build a lot of momentum and carry into the last week and reach as many of our, our ambitious goals as possible and deliver even more Ember goodness. So uh, definitely check out our stretch goals, check out like what's still available to be unlocked, like what we can, what we want to do. There's some amazing stuff out there that we're really excited to try and push for. So uh, give us a help with that. And um, be sure to, if you're able to pledge, thank you so much. If not, just helping us to spread awareness, uh, that, that is so valuable as well. Um, quick explanation, I mean, hopefully you've been following along each episode and so you know by now, but Ember's a, a game that's a, a hybrid between a traditional pen and paper tabletop RPG and a digital game that brings in all of the sorts of features that, you know, only a virtual tabletop can do or, or that we things that we love and draw inspiration from in the video games that we've played. But, you know, bringing those in to create a dynamic, evolving story with a really imaginative, vibrant fantasy world, amazing characters, uh, challenging adversaries, um, all kinds of things that you can see and do and explore. Um, and yeah, we're just so excited to be making this and have the chance to be making this. Uh, it's, it's really like awesome that we get to do this as like what our team does and so thank you all for the support that that makes that possible oh it's our pleasure <laughs> and it, it you're right that the not only is the interface fun to play and it's, it is that awesome mix of tabletop rpg and video game in a way but the world building it really is now that we're like really sinking in it is vibrant is the perfect word for it like it there's so many layers to it and I'm starting to feel like sunk into it a little bit. You know, you're waiting to see what moons are overhead. You're waiting to see like what past civilizations are uncovered uh, beneath. And yeah, a lot of this stuff can be kind of like tropish, but this all is feeling very tied together well and like a very, a unique and original world, which is uh, awesome to experience. We also, we got to, I was gonna say, we got to level up last episode too and 
getting a feel now for like the ancestries and stuff and the abilities you get as you level up, not only your class, but I don't know, I'm getting like a better sense of what who my character is and I'm bummed that <laughs> it ends oh, with this episode. I know. But it's like, it's really cool. I, I just, I, I want to explore so much more and like play a different ancestry now and see what that's like, so. And I have yeah. so many more descriptive phrases for how he moves. <laughs> <laughs> you I'll can post any that you have left over, you can put them in the in the YouTube notes. There oh, great, go. okay, I'll <laughs> look for them there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's really wonderful to hear that, and you will have made all of our writers smile by saying that, uh, which does a, a great service to offset uh, the cringing that they'll be doing every time Troy calls Maeus a god. <laughs> <laughs> so much cringing. Or makes fun of the stupidity of the giants. <laughs> I, could, I can't believe this lumbering oaf can speak. <laughs> They're sending people with like ancient technologies, like holograms. Yeah, uh, the guy that we met, you go to the Codex, is it Miamos or? Miroth. 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 Yeah. Miroth, the guy we met, Miroth, I mean, seemed like such a cool and wise and like ancient entity sort of uh, dude. And Troy just ruins it. Yeah. He ruins it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's really awesome uh, to yeah see the a different take on giants, which I really liked. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool too, yeah. yeah. The Shent are one of two different giant cultures that oh. were featured in, in Ember, and the other is a little different. Oh. Okay. Probably won't be encountered today, though. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rats. Well, more to look forward yeah. to in the in the yeah, full this, release. Like you said, this is just scratching the surface, and it's really designed to kind of be a gentle introduction to the setting, chapter one of of Ember, which is what we're playing through. We we won't get quite to the end of chapter one, but you know, this is a lot of the chapter one experience, and it's kind of an introduction to the world. It's an introduction for the players who are definitely new to this setting. It's an introduction for the GM to kind of also, I obviously kind of am familiar with what I'm, I'm doing, um, but for someone who's new to, to GMing in Ember also, the, the sequencing of events and things, it kind of allows everyone to get immersed in the world step by step uh, along with each other. And I want to ask like, for the GM, like if you're getting this adventure, like so will there be like some kind of document or something that the GM would be able to parse for like starting out on this like what format would that be yeah so we you know I mean? there's two there's two documents that would be outside of the context of the software itself there's the setting guide which is a fully focused on the lore of the setting and that's available either as a hardcover book mm. uh, that's, that our, was my other question partners at mage hand press that. yeah there's a, a hardcover book that you can get either with some of the pledge tiers on kickstarter or as an add-on there's also a, a pdf copy of that book if you just want the digital version and then there's a pdf player's guide which is designed at like for someone who's stepping into ember as a player for the first time what should you sort of know before session zero or before session one um but then the rest of the game master experience that's happening as you play is that the various quest lines that are in the world they pop up as game events happen, but as the GM, I can look ahead. I can sort of see and anticipate. Okay. There's also like UI on the map for the game master. So I can see like, oh, if they go over this way, then like maybe this event is going to happen. That so could I, trigger this. Or I that. can see a little bit. I, I can anticipate a little bit of what might happen yeah. coming up. But but then again, I am sometimes, you know, you'll sometimes be caught up in the surprise of, oh, this is happening now. I wonder what this is. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that may be stressful a little bit for some GMs, but I think as you get used to it, that the the ease with which these events are set up to be easy to run is, is I think, something that is designed to be pretty paramount. And even though they have complex mechanics, we have a really clear summary right at the top of the event. Like, this is what you need to know when you're starting this event. Like, here's the read aloud text that gets it started. Um, and all the information is presented there with like links out to any related concepts that you might need. And so it is designed to be something that, you know, you can prep as a GM sitting down to, to run a game in Ember, but you, the, your expectation should be that you don't necessarily have to. You can just show up for game time along with the folks at your table and you can just get straight into the action and you can play yeah. because wow. everything you need is already here. The music, <laughs> the maps, the artwork, the characters, the tokens, the, the narrative, um, you know, you can prepare if you want, but you, you shouldn't feel like you have to. Oh, That's really cool. That's great. I think there's also something neat for players to truly get the sense 
that their GM is surprised yeah. <laughs> by what's yeah. happening. You know, it, it kind of is a feeling of like, oh, so everything is not being crafted for me. They're not expecting everything that's happening and I'm I'm playing right into their hand or whatever. There, there's a neat element of that. Yeah. Right? Just like, oh, uh, this event is taking place. Hold on, let me let me see how this is gonna work. It, it makes the, it feel really That's uh, right. And when, when Ember, after chapter one, which Unfortunately, sadly, we won't get to, but after chapter one, the game really opens up into a much broader open world environment where like, you really can go any direction you want. You can pursue any plot thread that you want. And that's gonna have a GM a little bit more on your toes because like, I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, mm -hmm. With chapter one though, it is a little bit more of a well, even slightly with chapter more one, constrained experience. And you explained this early on as like, as like a tutorial chapter. Yeah. So it, it is gonna kind of handhold you a little bit, yeah. but like, we, I remember at a certain point, right when we left the caravan, like we could go north mm -hmm. or we could go south. I mean, this whole amazing giant adventure leading into the abyssal creature, whatever, like, does that happen anyway? Or like, is there a, another path south with different story, different adventures? There's a different, there's a different quest on the southern side. Oh, different, so cool. different narrative, different events, different characters, different adversaries. Uh, wow. Similar. There's, so you could complete yeah. this chapter one and never go to where we you went. You might, yeah, you might, wow. you might play through chapter one and never experience this because you took the other route. Oh. Or, um, I almost forgot about the other route. Yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. I got so wrapped up in all like the archaeologists. Well, I got really wrapped up in the archaeologists. Right. I was like Those obsessed. Thieves. Obsessed with the archaeologists. <laughs> if you recall, the, the, the breadcrumb there was that there's a mining settlement. Right. Yeah. yeah. I do remember the that. South yep. and, you know, surprise, surprise, there's something happening at that settlement that yep. demands your attention. Yeah. Um, wow. But not this time, because you've gone north. We've gone north. Wow. We chose our path. Yeah. Okay. Shall we? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> let's go, let's jump into it. Um, so, where we left off, uh, you had completed the challenge before you at the Lunar Water Temple. You had met the ancient Shent Sage Miroth. Uh, the projection of this ancient seer that tasked you with uh, a heavy burden, a heavy responsibility to rid the region of a remnant of abyssal horror that had crept into the world at the time of the abyssal shear, 2000 and some odd years ago, when the shattering rent asunder a tear in the weave. And this creature, along with others of its terrible ilk, swarmed into the world and there was a great war at that time, a war that resulted in the tragic uh, destruction of the Shent civilization. But Miroth and Miroth's uh, peers of the time sealed away this section of their society in order to try and control the damage of these creatures that had broken loose here. They sent warriors in who volunteered to give their lives fighting and they prevailed for the most part except for this one lingering shadow that had been impaled beneath a great sword of one of the Shent warriors left to linger for thousands of years, uh, stuck in this space, but uh, hanging on and, and waiting for its moment. And Miroth tasked you, uh, the first mortals to enter this space uh, since that time, to undertake the burden of finishing the job and, and preserving the peace and safety for the rest of Ember, uh, which would have surely been threatened had the Whisperer broken free. Um, and you persevered. You rose to the challenge. You convinced Kazra, the, the noble Kivar of the Fulgurite Blades, to join you. That was really um, cool. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we convinced one of them to split off. That was awesome. Yeah. You, you, you prevailed against the Whisperer. It was a challenging and, and formidable adversary, but you you came through and you you won the day and that's where we'll pick up at the site of that battle where we broke off last session right at the end of it we'll pick right back up where we left off because there's a little bit of investigation or or things to happen in the area um, and so i'm going to go ahead and pull you back into that scene okay yeah. all right and here we are at the site of yes, the battle i remember this uh, yeah Joe's in the in the waterfall and uh oh yeah let's hear it let's, let's, get, it, let's get that waterfall back out um, yeah, that was crazy that's so cool. that was really cool you may survey the area around you you may uh investigate uh there might be clues to gather here and so I wanted to Ooh. Yeah. oh I got okay yes I do want to investigate obviously 
the huge sword mm. that originally Obviously. impaled the creature. Uh, and I'm very close to it. I'm closer okay. to that than the creature. Well, I guess the creature itself disappeared, right? It discorporeated. It kind of melted into Icarus goo um, and, and wisps <laughs> of smoke. Yeah, it was not pleasant. Um, yeah, I'd like to look at the sword. I don't know if I should do an initial perception or do like an arcana. Or... You can start with perception if you want to just sort of see what you can see. Otherwise, if you want to go straight to arcana and, and scope it out, either path is, is open to you. Uh, I just l- like to look at the physical smithing of it. Yes. You know what I mean? The metal, and, and that kind of thing. What, what check would that be? Give me a, either perception Insight? or investigation. Investigation, okay. I'm gonna look at the bodies of the fallen giants, presumably these skeleton, skeletal remains of giants. Yes, Wanna indeed. Check that out. All right. First rolls of episode four. Natural one. Uh, Eminet has started auspiciously, Ignatius and Jake not so much. Um, Eminet, you assess the blade and you can surmise that there are markings covering it. Numerous magical symbols and runes, many of which appear to be blackened and burnt. You surmise that the markings uh, are magical fields or enchantments inscribed upon the blade itself. Uh, It seems mostly like evocation magic, and they seem to have been designed around preserving the steel, some abjuration as well, preserving the steel and holding the monster in place. But many of the runes are burnt out or cracked or broken over the, the intervening years that perhaps your intuition tells you that this might be kind of a, a process by which the creature was slowly breaking free of its yeah. impalement. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, if we hadn't come when we did. Yeah, I tell the party that as I'm, t- or I tell, I guess Ignatius is right next to me. Yeah. I'm telling you. See what you mean, yes. Scratch, I go Scottish every time I try to go Irish. <laughs> scratched out, uh, they're scratched out. Hey. Yes. I'll, I'll get into my accent later. You talk now, and I'll think about it over here. Yes, we came at the right time. It was, it was very close. Yes, it's a good thing I landed the killing blow. Yes, very oh, well done, Jake. Jake. Cool. Yes, in Zeph culture, he who lands the killing blow gets the best treasure. Is there? You're gonna try to take the you sword. Want to take the sword there, Jake? Cool. Well, let's look watch around. You pick it up. I can't make heads or tails of these skeletons. The the great sword itself seems uh, too large probably to to practice well certainly it's too large to wield it might be too large to remove uh at all but you do notice that there are two prominent red gemstones in its cross guard that are somewhat eye-catching um you surmise they might be valuable although you're not sure what process might be required to remove them or if that would be dangerous or destructive in any way um you look around jake at the remains of the, uh, the the bones of, of ancient giants. And there's nothing that really like immediately catches your eye, but there are remains all over. So if you wished to investigate them further, it depends on what you're kind of after. Are you looking for artifacts or treasure? Or are you trying to learn about their fate or what's your... No, he cares not for their fate. <laughs> okay, uh, looking for the good stuff. He's looking for the remains. Yeah, give me an investigation check then. Investigation, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... Nice. Okay, a little better. Uh, 15. Not bad. All right. You do notice a few, uh, a scattered collection of Shent artifacts of mixed value. Anything that would be useful uh, from a combat perspective is either impractically large or badly broken. Uh, It doesn't seem like there's any sort of items, weaponry, or armor that was magically enchanted to the extent that it survived the intervening years aside from the impaled, the greatsword. However, there are some artifacts that you've gathered, uh, sort of bracelets, jewelry, a choker, uh, an amulet pin. Doesn't necessarily seem to be magical, but perhaps of uh, curiosity value to a collector or antiquarian. Hmm. It's pretty heavy though. Uh, altogether, it's maybe about 20 pounds of stuff. If you'd like me to add it to your inventory, I can do so. Uh, add it to Kavra's inventory. 
carry this for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Do not burden the NPC. I shall uh. carry this. <laughs> oh. Carry this load. Okay. I will place the artifacts in uh, Flomberg in your inventory. If I cannot contribute to the defeating of our enemies, at least I can carry their luggage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't beat yourself up, Flomberg. You, you Flomberg. distracted it. Flomberg is quite the uh, collector now because you've got the planisphere. Oh, yeah. And now you've also got the, the artifacts from here. Um, yeah, I mean, this wins any contest at the uh, in Ordain. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 For the uh, anachronium. The anachronium contest or whatever. Like, we We're crushed winning. them. Flomberg? Yes. We're not going to tell Sejor about any of this, correct? If you... You are wiser than I, I suppose not. No. I don't think that we should. No, I suppose you are right. We will hoard these treasures to ourselves. Well, no, we don't have Secrets. To. No, we're not hoarding them. We're Precious gonna, secrets. We're going to share them with <laughs> your Dani people and the Anachronam when we share get- Share them with no one. No, what? What are you saying? We will consume their knowledge like the giant spider on Goliath. Consumed light. Hating it and desiring it all at once. So I Flomberg, lost thought. Okay. <laughs> Flomberg, you used to really not talk Flomberg's a lot. hallucinations. <laughs> oh. now, yeah. now you're talking a lot. <laughs> sorry. Very sorry. Just, I'm overwhelmed by my surroundings. <laughs> There's a near religious awe that overtakes me. I am not myself. Forgive me. Maybe I should hold the orb, Flomberg. It's far too heavy. I'll take it. <laughs> As you are debating. Something's wrong with Flomberg. <laughs> there is a, a, a glimmer of light. That, that seems to come from almost all directions at once, reflecting off of the, um, the spinal gems in the, in the pommel of the sword and kind of refracting around the place and suddenly Im coalescing into space on the island, a glimmering projection of Miroth the Sage. Well, he's here. Oh, he, he said, he said, he said, wow. he'd, come. He said he'd come. I oh. thought we'd have to go back to him. This his, is very appar convenient. his apparition is somewhat weaker than what you encountered before, um, as if the strength of the projection is not as strong. In yeah. fact, I'll just, I'll just lower that down a little bit for... Um, oh, cool! Oh, wow. <laughs> that was so subtle and awesome. <laughs> he has a dimmer switch. Yeah, he has a dimmer switch. Um, but, but Miroth, the projection emerges into this space as you are recovering your strength and um, investigating the area in the aftermath of the Whisperer's defeat, and Miroth looks at you with a approving uh, and, and proud expression upon his weathered face, and he says, uh, Thank you for doing what we could not. When it became clear that the Shent could not defeat the creature, our warriors chose to Pin it in place and seal the area. You have done a great thing here by finishing their work. I can direct you to the reward that I have promised when you are ready, and then I must depart. I cannot project myself this far away for very long. Although I suspect this may not be the last time that we interact. Hmm, perhaps not. You did speak, though, of a door to the south. We, we wanted to make sure we could reconnect with our caravan that way. I, I hadn't seen it yet, and we felt like we were at the end here. Is there a path through the cliffs? You must tell us, as you promised, how to open this path, this door, the second door. Please. I am true to my word. To the west of here and south, there is a great cavern. Shimmering in the darkness, it is um, otherworldly and treacherous. Be careful in that place. But at the end of it, there is a door, companion to the one we sealed to the north. The command phrase that you will need to open it is hope in destruction. Hope in destruction. It is part of a longer inscription, but that is the only part that you need in order to unseal 
the gateway. Uh, I would also like to give you some knowledge that I have, should you choose to pursue it. Uh, within that cave, a party of our number, a fellow sage, fell in battle long ago. Uh, he was carrying an artifact of our people. It is no use abandoned. I think that you should have it. Is it our size? It will be somewhat large, but it is... It's people-sized. It is a scroll case of some unique capabilities. I see. As you are going through the caverns, look for the remains of an ancient battle and check those who fell there. If you find the case, it may yield power from our people's greatest sages to you should you learn to unlock its mysteries. I'm sure you will find it to be a diverting challenge. Hmm. This is a this is a fine gift for the small price of us saving the world. Thank you. Would that I could do more, but <laughs> I would <as> Bumber. <laughs> <laughs> this is you're no, I, you're being rude. You're carrying not, so much shit. This is the way of the Korak. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm being I'm being gracious in, in our way. I did not interpret your words as insincere. <laughs> oh no. Good. You see? He knows the Korak. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well we should go. Yes. Soon. We'll start to lose light. Let's find this place. The flickering apparition of Miroth starts to fade as if the seer is hanging on with whatever lingering power he has left. Do you have any final questions? Miroth! Oh no. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> My mother always raised me to believe that your people were fools. Just lumbering goofs. <laughs> <laughs> now having met you, I think she may have been wrong. And I'm embarrassed. Well, perhaps while our time has passed, it is your turn to care for Ember and assure its safety. The terrible menace of the Abyss has not left these lands. It merely slumbers. Me One oh. question before I also you. had a question. Yeah. You first. I'm going to go for and, okay. I had another thing I wanted well, to say. Well, you this. wanted to For 90 powers. years. <laughs> fading fast. For 90 years, I've said terrible things about them. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed. 90? You already yes. said that. Yes, I'm just. Uh, the whole life. Let Ignatius ask a question, then I get to, and you've already asked one. I want another one. <laughs> Everyone wait. This incredible sword is of breathtaking craftsmanship. Its gems are set in a way that I wish I could replicate myself. I, this sword is too large for us to bring back to our people as a, uh, as a memory of this great history left behind. I also would not like to leave it simply here. Is there, would you be offended if we tried to take at least these gems with us as a, memory of this place? Or should we leave the sword intact? Miroth offers a, a smile uh, and says, thank you for asking, but we are not defined by our material legacy. Take what you will, oh, and may it serve you as it <laughs> could us. Uh, it is not any offense. How do we get them out, sorry? We couldn't figure out. I said, wait out. for your next question. Well, no, that's then... a follow up to his question. That's not my question. <sighs> <laughs> follow up. <laughs> how do we get the... Sorry, you can ask if you want. I know how to get them out. You do know? Okay, sorry. I'm you had withdrawn. a question. I have withdrawn. a question. <laughs> I'll strike it from the rest. Redact race. that. Redact that. <laughs> Is that his question? Everywhere I went, I said Mir <laughs> Mir <laughs> Wait your fucking turn. Miroth? Uh... 
What's the entire phrase? I know you told us the way to get through the door is hope in destruction, but the previous phrase held more information that we're now aware of. Hmm. But what's the entire phrase? I'd like to write it down, if possible. Should the dreamer wake again, we must be called ready and stand. For at the darkness, we can still find hope in destruction. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. Um, all right. Proceed. I forgot my question. I'm sorry. (laughs) It took too long. Suffered many grievous wounds this day. (laughs) Pull Miroth up for you. Oh, so cool. More face to face. Our work. Oh, yeah. I want to get this person's number through this. Can I? (laughs) Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Hands off. And give them lots of work. (laughs) Our our, our team and Jordan, who did this piece, is wonderful. Uh. But... We have need of him. Oh. What, do we pay? what do they pay you over there? We'll yeah. have it. Oh, oh, yeah, we'll have it. We'll have it. We'll Whatever have it. they're paying you, we'll have it. We'll have it. <laughs> he will love to hear that. He's so, it's so like it's such an intimidating presence, but also like I want to like give him a hug. Yeah. Uh, like uh, he seems so wizen and like kind. Yes. Um, but also like a rock giant. Also, props to Ember's co-director and art director Kaora, who gives wonderful guidance to the artists to help them achieve. Oh, Kaora! Vision. Hey, hands off! <laughs> <laughs> We're poaching your whole team for pennies on the dollar. How do you like that, <laughs> Jordan? If only this Jordan had a last name. <laughs> <laughs> hands on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. Bro. We still have more game to play. Don't be mean to the DM. Don't make the DM mad. Finish the Kickstarter, then we can ransack, <laughs> we can can ransack the team. <laughs> ransack the team. Uh, this, yeah, this artwork is incredible. I love um, it. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else we we want? Do you want to ask him anything else? Actually? I did actually want to ask if he knows if there's anything else he can tell us about these creatures, and if he knows anything about like any of their spawn or their like exist in the world today is this like a one shot one off thing or mm. Miroth's uh, presence is is really faint now and you sense that this may be the last response that the seer is able to give um, Miroth looks at you and says they remain but I do not know where I can only see near where my machines still live My vision is clouded, but I think there is a way. I cannot say more right now, but we will meet again. And with that, Miroth is gone. I was going to ask him, giant everywhere. What are they called? Did did he tell us what they were called? What the Shent called these abyssal creatures? These creatures. There are this, not this one, one was this named one was the named the Whisperer, but there are um, not well-known names for these things because they were kind of sudden and unknowable, and they came and and you know they did not exist in any book or any um, the the war that raged following the Abyssal Shear. You know the people of Ember would have given names to these things based on what kind of threat they represented, but mm. whatever their- As a whole. They, yeah, whatever their true names or whatever, uh, this is not something that is really known to anyone. Okay, interesting. That would be something to research. Mm. Yeah. See if there was ever any old text. There are, anybody. I'm sure, scholars uh, yeah. that, you know, in whether in the Anachronum or elsewhere, perhaps at the Riven Star Mage Academy, which uh, with, which uh, Jake crashed out of at a, at a younger age. I would have um, known the name if I had graduated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been in your second year. Right. Too, too bad you dropped out in your first. Yeah. So we'll close. Have to name it ourselves. Um, Is there anything else to uh, sort of look through here? Is there anything else to investigate obvious to us or can we... Just the maybe the gems and the sword that you were interested in and, uh, you know, Jake already recovered some of the artifacts from the the fallen Shent. Um, of course, if you have other ideas, I'm happy to explore them with you. Uh, I Flomberg, while the gems are being 
desecrated. I'm going <laughs> to, Flomberg is just going to kind of wade through these pools mm -hmm. and just this clear water. I'm just going to like look through to see if there's anything that we haven't noticed beneath the surface of the water. Sure. Yeah. Give me a perception check. All right. Part of the water around the, the central island is befouled and um, really just like fill of muck and kind of all the plants around it are dead, but as you get further away and, and ascend further away from this place, the water kind of returns to the kind of healthy azure hues of the rest of the dripstones. Um, you see the bodies of some fallen shent in the water. Um, you know, they're all, only bones left after, after uh, millennia, but um, there's nothing other than the bones that particularly catches your eye. Could I attempt to remove these gems with Smith tools with smithing tools, smith tools, crowbar, strength, uh, yeah, various uh, so avenues. What would the check be with those smith tools, or can I just? Oh, it's intelligence. It says. Uh, well, oh, I could just this do would a roll. be a, this would be a strength based check, probably to pry them free. So, if you wanted to make a smith tools check, but using your strength ability yep, score, that was very easy to do. And here we go. Mm. Let's see, uh, Midland, uh, fourteen. Yeah, I think this is probably about a kind of a fail forward sort of thing because um well the, it just takes you longer yeah, uh, you, it takes you time takes takes more time than you maybe initially expected but uh, it's worth it after an, an hour passes they're coming and, out you wanted them i know i'm just asking are we in a rush because i think i can get it if i just get a little more time without breaking them well we you are know that the, in a rush a little bit you know that the the dusk tide festival is supposed to happen at about this time tomorrow Right, um, the so festival. Have, we can't festival. miss the you festival. You have about 24 hours. As oh my God, and we forgot to call. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, we, call. we should do that now. Uh, wait, wait you have the stone. I have the stone. I'm gonna pull you over here for a moment to the, the Cosmos map. Yes. Ooh. See mm -hmm. that um, as you gaze at the starscape, <clears throat> you understand that um, Maeus has been full now for several days, but as of this day, as of just a couple of hours ago, Orbis is now also full. Ah. So Orbis ah. is not. I am attuned to Orbis. That's right. As am I. Orbis is not yet. I am a at son its... of Orbis or an Orbis son. As it <laughs> Orbis, the great. Oh my God. Nice. How does he do it? His brain. <laughs> How does he do Orbis it? Orbis son. Orbis, <laughs> the great dictator, as Maeus would call him. <laughs> well, anyways, the. the, the uh, <laughs> the congruence of these two moons that are now in the sky mm. uh, marks the beginning of dusk tide that will last for two or three days. Right, and sorry, can you please describe w what the what you <laughs> see in the sky and why this is a big deal? Like, is it just two full moons in two different it's, parts of the it's sky? It's two large moons. You actually see three moons in the sky because Aura is also in the sky right now, but okay. Aura's influence is currently is currently waxing away. But if we if we pop over to the scene where we started for a moment um, on the broken tower, yeah, um, we can use this to kind of, you're not at the broken tower at this moment, but if you look up in the sky, there are um, faintly three moons that are up there. So Maeus- Wait, so this scene changes with the cosmos map? That's right. Map? Yeah, no, so it does not. Yeah, yeah, so which moons are in the sky here? Oh, cool. <laughs> Um, which is just all layers and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my. Yeah. yeah, so you think it's just like wallpaper and it's, right. it's dynamic wallpaper. That's like. Yeah, so, so you can cool. see. Um, I mean, the clouds are moving. Yeah. I didn't even notice that before. Well, yeah, and you were saying that like the, the shards of the broken tower are, are moving as well. Those they're like subtly. Subtle, yeah, so. they're subtly moving. Um, so, so Maeus is the one that's kind of low on the horizon. Oh, wow. And very, oh, very yeah, yeah. Uh, right there in the background, swirling with kind of its oceanic azure blue. And then Orbis is this mysterious kind of caged, multi-layered caged orb of energy in the sky that's sort of slowly rotating in the in the distance. But um, they're, they're on different, you know, different paths, different lunar orbits. But uh, And you can see Aura. Aura is, yeah, faint in, in the, the background. In the oh, Aura's, yeah. Aura's oh, up there, too. Oh, that's neat. so cool. Ah. Oh. Two big full moons, one a little lower. Yeah, the during sky, the middle of the higher. day, they're they're faint because it's you know tough to make them out beyond the the atmosphere that Ember has. But you can see them up there, and you, and as the day grows darker, the the kind of show of their vibrant color in the night sky will will manifest itself. Cool. Um, Very cool. All 
All right. Um, so uh, oh, eventually we'll pry these gems out. Yeah, let me put those um, into your inventory. Awesome. And then we'll be on our way. Yes, let us travel like the Wilburys of the Orbis Sun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, it's just unbelievable. Uh, uh, Aminette, can you, do you just write or do you sketch as well? She can sketch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you should sketch the sword, like where, oh. with the gem, so we yeah. show people like where they came from, what it looked like. I'll say canonically, she's been also taking light sketches. She's not an artist, but she has calligraphers tools, and she will do doodles like amongst her, her shorthand. Sketch uh, me holding it. <laughs> get get wait, a wait. sketch of me Hold on. holding it. I want to get in there. Wait, come closer, and then make it forced, look like you're pushing it. A little forced perspective. Yes. Yeah, yeah, make everyone like stand I'll closer. I look so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Look wow. at the big sword Beautiful. they'll say. Look, look at that big sword. I wouldn't have known how big it was if it wasn't for Jake Cool. I flip it around and it's like a caricature and your mask is like huge <laughs> and the big eye holes and you look like the sad tragedy uh, mask. Hey, do you like roller skating? <laughs> <laughs> I put roller skates on you. <laughs> so everybody likes roller skating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let us travel. Let's travel. Like, like right. the oh, we got to choose. We said uh, he said south into the west, so we might as well just head yeah, to the to the west, west. Is what Miroth described. Is you have to travel west for a while yeah. to get uh, to reach these caverns. We got to go back the way the way we almost went initially. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So time is passing. Actually, yeah. I mean, all right. Is getting into it's the four o'clock in the afternoon. Three o'clock. Three o'clock, three o'clock, o'clock. now. Four. Oh, yeah. you're right. Sorry. Three o'clock then four. Then four. Uh, oh, so more. can we see this crystal? No, no. Okay, yeah. go bring it up. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know if we got close enough. Things time. things have been going pretty smoothly with our. Oh, it starts oh. raining very heavily. Oh, no. oh, it's my storming. It's storming in the dripstones. It's as, six oh. o'clock now and it's, it's storming. Yeah, can't believe the dripstones are wet. It, you're getting <laughs> drenched and you you find yourself uh, longing for a place to to um, let us be dry. Can't. However, sorry, before advancing on. Um, Kazra speaks up and says, Oh, right. Friends. No. I'm afraid I must leave you. No, 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 no Kazra. Kazra. I knew you were going to say no. that. And we don't accept. You are a permanent member of this organization. We you die out there alone. We reveled together. Did you see what you were a part of? What you did, what you're capable of. I what did. What you did to save this place and, and all of these artifacts that we need to return to... The Arch- Ordain or, or, and the Anachronaeum. The Anachronaeum. We'll wither and die without you. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> I am flattered and receptive to your arguments, but will you marry for us? these same <laughs> for these same reasons? Don't you feel that Sajor and the Fulgurites need me as well? They're as good as dead. They are. Yes, uh, they are uh, taking every precaution to stay out of any sort of danger whatsoever. They are collecting what they are collecting and. You are collecting what you are collecting, and we will all meet and ordain. I think you should travel our road. We could use your help, and we could, of course, and you can get the credit for all these incredible things you've done with well, us. We're also on the way to the Dustfall Festival, so sort of a party at the end of the mm-hmm. rainbow. Also, yeah, was- also, I think um, I think Leaf is a thief. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Kazra laughs and says, uh, well, yes, that's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you knew. Oh, you. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He was being a little. Like, I think he's literally stealing from you. We, yeah. He's being a little weird. Not, at the no, time. not from me. No. Oh. Um, oh. Sometimes we need something, though, that. Uh, well, anyways. Oh. We're not oh, really heroes. We're just making our way. In Lombard, check your pockets. This world. Yes. I didn't take anything. I didn't. You I were of you... most help. Uh, yes. Thank you. We could not have done it without you. Flumberg would have died for sure. Flumberg, let me let me at least mend your remaining. Oh yes, before before I part ways with you. So you are. Um, Are you all right, Jake? I just thought she would stay. I thought so too, Jake. Cool. It's very dangerous out there. Kazra says, uh, "Take heart, Jake. Cool. (laughs) We will meet again. I'm sure in Ordain. I hope. Yes. Twelve points of healing to you, Flumberg. Awesome." Be careful out there. My ethereal hand slips her my phone number. Mm. She takes it and says, thank you for talking to Sejor the way you did. She's not a bad person. 
In fact, there's a lot to admire about her, but she needs... She needs the perspective of others in her group to, to help her make the right decisions sometimes. And I feel like I need to return to them. She's really cool. Don't tell her I said that. I won't. And thank you for talking to her and standing up for yourself and coming with us. We probably would have died. Though you make the cowardly choice now, your initial choice to come with us <laughs> See ya. We will remember your bravery and not your cowardice at this moment. Uh. <laughs> she, she looks so she looks amazing. downcast and uh, it's just pouring rain into the rain. That's his way. He's a Korak. No. Yeah. Her shoulders. That's his hunched. way of saying thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Hazard disappears into the distance, heading northeast. Yeah, and I, oh. I. Flamberg is like shaking his head. He's almost near tears. It's like, I didn't have the heart to tell her, but her companions are long dead. <laughs> <Rory did. laughs> Wait, Flamberg, why? No, they, I took measures to ensure they would die this day. Flamberg! <laughs> well, perhaps she will return when she finds their bodies. <laughs> no, that, that way is folly. Cut, cut to. Harvey Mudd, what's he doing? Harvey Mudd's just hanging out. What's he's stalking he them. I think he's just stalking them. Yeah, all time. Harvey. He's just eating their bodies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like feasting. Blood soaked campsite. <laughs> in, a, in a clump of grass somewhere in the dripstones, the small hunched figure of Harvey Mudd waits, lurking. Watching, <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting for the moment to strike. Until the time is right. Until yeah. the whatever, time is right. Whatever that means. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, amazing. All right. Uh, I want to get out of this rain. Maybe we could get to the caves and get some cover from this. Well, let's push to the west. Aye. Yes, to the west. Okay. And at this moment, you would, in fact, see... A cavern entrance oh. to the south of you. So you didn't see it oh. until now. Oh, okay. this is what the cavern is. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Okay. But as you as you reach all of the way to the west in this um, caldera of the dripstones, you see to the south various large dark openings in the rock, uh, the openings of a cave system, surely the one that Miroth spoke of. And in the darkness, the faint glimmer of light, uh, opalescent and inviting or unnerving. You can't quite put your finger on it. Huh. Well, let's at least get some cover from this. Uh, and, because I hate the water. Mm, oh, yes, you right. Do. Yeah. That's right. So he just sort of like rushes into just the entrance of the cave, just to at least get under Wait, it. Wait, Ignatius. He's not going to run too Caution. <sighs> Should we move the, the caravan party you should, down? Yes. Okay. Should we yes. move it into that yes, next? You yes, should, yes. Yeah, okay. We're not charging headlong into the middle of the wait. kaleidoscope oh. caves. That's cool. That's a very cool. Our name. weapons. Our weapons. We will not need them. <laughs> Indeed. So a breathtaking sight unfolds before you. A vast system of interconnected caves filled with pockets of darkness and light make it nearly impossible to gauge their full size. These caverns are adorned with strange prismatic crystals that jut out from the ground and the walls like the jagged teeth of a colossal beast. The crystals shimmer with an otherworldly opalescence. The faint light from the mouth of the cave behind you reflects and refra refracts into a mesmerizing pattern of vivid color. The reflections dance hypnotically across the stone floor, creating an ever-shifting landscape of shadow and light. Um, hmm. hmm. Do you want to push forward through the caves? You are out of the rain. Let's do a survival it check. It is getting late. We should see if other... We should probably rest. Yeah. I, I'm I out of rage. I need my spells. I used my spells. I need my spells. Is, I've taken one hit point of damage in four episodes. Yeah, I didn't take any I gotta damage. work on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Note to self. I shouldn't have Target. said it aloud. Target I'm, try. I'm okay, yeah, but like in classic spellcaster tradition I, I just need a rest because i have no spells yes let's rest but let's look at the ground here see if we are the only yeah let's yeah survival cave you may each roll cave. a survival check uh 
poop. There, the the lighting here is dim light. So it is even though it, you are in a cave, it is not complete darkness. The crystals have a little bit of a sort of nascent ambient glow, a faint hum that suffuses. Are they the, the exact color of these walls? Yes, exactly yeah. the color. Of these <laughs> I was walls. just looking at the oh, walls. Wow. So I was like, wait a minute. Oh, this is. Did you choose this deliberately? This I this said purple. I said purple would be a good color. For this oh, episode. that's amazing. Uh, that's great. Yeah. So immersive. I love it. <laughs> All right. Wow, we rolled miserably. Yep. Always. I saw one good roll, no? Nope. I think I knocked a die into a netting. You 19. sense that <sighs> five, um, six, five, seven. <laughs> you, you find no trace of any other creature. See, it's nearby. perfectly safe. We're safe here. <laughs> we don't even need a watch. Let's party. <laughs> Let's party. <laughs> Let's be as loud as possible. Well, actually, I I'm going to cook again. I think I'm not going to do it. Because we're going to be loud. Yeah, because it, it, oh. it, it attracts. Oh, right. Uh, oh, yeah. Within 300 feet. Feet. Oh, we. Ca- I don't think we it's should. It's a lot of noise. I don't yeah, think and it will echo it farther echo than that, probably. Yeah. So yeah, I would say I'm not going to do it. And I ha- and I did already spend my inspiration. Oh no, I have inspiration. I didn't spend it. Uh, I spent mine. Did However, I will cook so that we can all raise our max HP by two. Beautiful right. ritual cooking. Quiet. No one talk to me. This is part. It's, it's, it's a bit of a ritual for me. <laughs> do we get oh, back oh, inspiration fine. when we long rest or no? No. Okay. Only if you revel. Yeah. That's a special. That's a special mechanic that accrues only if you are having a, a party. This is extremely cool. We talked about this before uh, about the just the cool additional details that you add, the flavor of the world in terms of the ancestries and stuff like that, the the cultures. And I mean, this is different from ancestry. Yes, that's this right. Is culture. And our two cultures, oh, yeah, like yeah. we can, last episode, we combined them, <laughs> right? Yeah. In order to get like temporary hit points and inspiration. You mm-hmm. cooked, I drank beer and, uh, you know, got everybody up and dancing. It's yeah. just a fun thing to see the cultures coming together mm-hmm. and uh, our mechanics, yeah, giving the yeah, world. The mechanics are going to evolve a lot over the course of play testing. Like we're still pre-alpha, like we're going to get play test feedback. We are already play testing internally, but alpha test, beta test, like what exactly end up being the culture mechanics in the long run will mm. I'm sure evolve, but we really like the idea of the cultures giving kind of like a downtime feature or a rest feature. Yeah. Um, not necessarily something that's like active combat, but something that can kind of be used to enrich what your character does outside yeah. of mm-hmm. outside of those combat moments. Yeah, that's cool. And it's really cool for the, for my culture to be flame guard militia, you know, and it could just be, it could easily be, interpreted or the mechanic you could come up with is something that's like warfare strategy or like something like that. But instead you're like, no, we're going to make it like, you know, the way soldiers party because they're always yeah. at the brink yeah. of death. Yep. Right. So yeah, yeah. The way like it's your party. last night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a really cool idea. I always love partying it. like it's 1999. <laughs> yes. I love it. Uh, all right. So we looked around the immediate area. We're going to try to stay quiet and low key yeah. and rest. Okay. Stay dry. No fire. Get some sleep. Well, no, you're cooking. I'm cooking. Yeah, we yes. can have a fire. Small fire. Yes. I'm making I will beans. trigger a rest, and then we're going to see whether you make it through unscathed. So okay. you'll do it on your end? Yes, I will do it on okay. my end. We're going to go to the party here, mm. and then... Oh, actually, before then, because what time is it? Like, it's like it's 7 o'clock. o'clock right it's only now. 7, so, it's, so you're going to have some extra time to... I'm going to spend an hour creating an, another like little automaton out of crystals. And I'm gonna name him Pinocchio 3000. And Pinocchio 3000. Pinocchio 3000. After the great film starring Howie Mandel, same name. I'm gonna set him down, and that's one of the things I can do is like have him watch, do a do a watch okay. for us. So he's going to yeah. perform our our watching duties. An extra sentinel. Yeah. Excellent. Love it. Um, all right. Time advances. It's quiet. It's storm passed. The storm passed. Uh, it's a little unnerving, though. As you rest within the cavern, the swirling pattern created by crystalline reflect- reflections changes and the air moves slightly, as if somehow whispering a secret. Flickers and flashes of light dance through the cavern like ripples in water. Some of these flashes rush overhead or circle you briefly before dying out, but each time they pass, you're left feeling slightly lightheaded. You blink or turn your head, and the light from within the violet crystal seems to shift, creating a hypnotic effect that makes it difficult to concentrate on anything else. As your vision focuses in on the shimmering light and 
the swirl of the, the myriad movement, you feel increasingly woozy as countless dots of light infiltrate your field of view and can't quite be shaken off. I need each of you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh this won't be good. Oh, no. This won't be good at all. <laughs> yeah, the streak continues. Oh, no. Oh, no, brother. Oh, oh. <sighs> Jake Cool got an 18. I went to bed and got dumber. I did so good against that creature, and now I'm stupid. Ooh, Ignatius and Jake. Cool under pressure. Lomberg. Focused. You feel drained. The light from within the kaleidoscope crystal begins to move in a mesmerizing pattern, making it nearly impossible to look away. You take one level of exhaustion. Oh. 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 We oh. just and you do not benefit from a long rest. Oh my no. god. Or rather you do, but you awaken from it exhausted. Okay. Um Ugh. Eminent. Uh, you feel intoxicated. Oh great. You feel unsteady on your feet, but full of vigor. You have advantage on initiative checks but disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Oh, oh my Eesh. God. Eesh. Not helpful for my character. <laughs> um, You're right. not sure how long these effects will last, but awakening from your rest within this strange biome has left you with some side effects. Is this an, a condition or something I should put on what I have or... I probably should have a condition that I can apply to you, but I don't, so we will just remember. Remember, okay. Just making sure. That's a good note, though. I think that's the kind of thing that ideally Ember should have. Yeah. I could just fire it up to Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the, not the right again? recipient yeah, what's, of what's, that piece what's of feedback. Jordan's email. Jordan's email. email. Right now. Jordan, it what's it Jordan's Smith. email and social security? Smith. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn profile. <laughs> he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna be glowing hearing this. Uh, Seriously, he's gonna email you immediately. You're like, I'll do whatever. Let's let's go. Uh, <laughs> he's in Andrew's basement. So it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's just like <laughs> watching this on YouTube. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. Let me out. I'm never to his liking. I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> My stylus hand is blistered. And <laughs> I, I, I like to think we treat our artists well, but they work very, very hard. They're very dedicated. And so um, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're very grateful to them. Um, awesome. All right. It is early in the morning, but, but in this cavernous environment, I mean, you kind of have a sense that it's early, but it's without the direct sunlight or without the direct reference points of the moons overhead, you don't n- really feel like you know exactly what time it is, but you know it's early in the day. So you could get a early start on adventure. I mean, you have potentially a long day ahead of you if you're gonna make the festival. Yeah. yeah. Or you can uh No, that's what we wanna time. do. Yeah. yeah. We get up early and uh, you know, it's maybe it's four AM, we're not hundred percent sure because we're in this cave, but it's just mm-hmm. like uh festival's tonight. We have to find our way back to the caravan today right. as but, quickly as possible. But Ignatius, this is the cave. What about the cave? Well, this is the cave that Miroth told us to find. We were told that we would find our reward here in the cave, the, the sage, remnants of battle. The sage that fell in battle? Yes. We have to find the scroll case. Yes, but I believe it's on the way to the door. No, it's in the cave. No, I believe that the door we need is through the cave, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. What would you say? You're so funny. <laughs> and she goes to like. Oh, because she's, oh, she's messed up. She goes to like. I love it. Slap you with her ethereal arm and kind of misses. What are you doing? Do you, what? Do you need more sleep? Playing. We're having a joke. Or having a laugh. Uh, please shut up. I'm trying to make another little man. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong Making, with. Oh, God. I'm so tired. Oh. This is going to be a long day. What's wrong with Flamberg? More like. like Lamb. Lamb. <laughs> More like flam fla, <laughs> And I breathe life into Pinocchio 3000 <gasps> Jr. Oh my God. Because you will stay with me, little man. <sighs> <sighs> Let's fatigue, the fatigue sets in, but <laughs> Pinocchio 
nestles into your oh. horak bosom. Yes. <laughs> Let's just get going. All right, through the cave. Let's onward and upward. It's kind of a way to start the day. <laughs> I love it. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Mm. Um, all right. I feel like this is a mile. Every one of these is a mile in the cave. Right? Yes, so, and no. it's difficult terrain. So no turning oh, back. No. No. So it, However, so it'll take two hours to cross the it, hex? It will. Uh, one hour. One hour per hex. Oh, Wait. that's right. It's a half oh. hour. Wait, why'd you go south? What? I'm just moving. The cave is behind us. You are in, We're in the cave. a large oh. cavern. You are in a large cavern. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought the cutout in the mountain side on the map, mm. that little thing. That's oh, the, the cave entrance. entrance. That's the entrance of the cave. I see, I we see. We walked into it last yeah. night. I see, I didn't understand. You are now yes. inside. I often mistake, say, a door for an entire house. Yes, you are now inside <laughs> the cavern. Um, <laughs> and you you make your way through it just following instinct, or how are you, how are you pathfinding here? What's your... I'm, my intention here is to walk into every hex of the cave. Sure, but so like, you know, in sort of in the in the character of it, like in this environment, how would you try and decide which way to go? I have dancing lights. I could. Sure, that would look so cool. Yeah. Shoot, shoot them out and you in can. In the kaleidoscope uh-huh. caves, oh that God. would look so cool. Look at our abilities and see if there's anything that may help us. Yeah, I mean. If I do it and someone has good like survival, they could scout, you know, kind of. Not scout ahead, but kind of be on the lookout, I guess. I mean, what he's saying is we have no way to know what direction we're facing once we get a mile deep into the cave. So, uh, so if anyone has good we... survival. Yeah, yeah. So outside mm-hmm. of that, is there any other way? Because I don't have good survival. I got a plus and, and we all failed last night. Yeah. I have plus two, but I, can cast I have disadvantage. Guidance on somebody. It's true. Yeah. <sighs> Who has the best? I have a plus one. And you have a plus two? I have plus two, right. but I have disadvantage. Oh, ooh, ooh. right. Wait, d- it's ability <laughs> checks, right? Yeah. yeah. So does that does that include skill yes, checks? Okay. Skill checks. So. so, I'm so, 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 so. A guided Joe Cool with the assistance of your companions who are also helping. So you have a, a advantage on the roll plus a one d four. And I'm just gonna roll it. Anyway. Circumstance bonus. Does he advantage get a, plus. A pl- an extra plus one circumstance bonus with the dancing lights to help see, or does that not really do? Much? I think that's the that's this. such a small local area of effect. And okay. um, this is more of like. Ooh, oh, I, whoa, how about a 23? Nice. 20. So 24? Yeah, because I had a, the 1d4 as well, so uh, it would be a 23. 23. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, you have a good sense of which way to go. All right, excellent. Fact, um, excellent. You were not afflicted by the hypnotic or mesmerizing effect of the caverns. Your Your head is clear, and you just keep focused on, like, this way is south. This way is east. And as you go, you kind of maintain your bearings and you are confident that you've moved south for a while and that east is probably what you need to do next. But as you're making your way through these caverns, your journey begins to be slowed somewhat as you notice the growing presence of glittering webs stretching across columns of stone and crystal. Muroth's words and the hint that he said at the time to watch for the glint of gossamer when searching for the fallen scent shent seer ring in your ears and you wonder could this be the area that Miroth spoke of? Do you head further in that direction? Yeah. Or do you that's, turn away? That's further east. It would be in the hex that you're currently in. Oh, it's yeah. more like a question of <laughs> Do you want to investigate yes. further? Yeah. Yes, then yes. yes. Ethereal sure. arms, tap her own shoulders, cast mage armor immediately. Okay. And uh, we'll start to hack away at the gossamer webs. If you don't have to hack through them yet. They're not that They're not that much of an impediment. Okay. But, but we just see. Yeah, you're kind of needing to brush them aside. And <laughs> it's just finding your way becomes a little bit more. Be on your guard. That's sticky. Difficult. You push in. I'm gonna bring you over oh, no. here. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, uh, what's the music gonna change to? Horror. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh, 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 oh come this on. This is ridiculous. Oh, Andrew, no. do we hear like you do not hear any into the back of a nightclub. Yeah, you do not hear any music, but you could imagine it. You could imagine it in your mind. 
Um, and oh, oh, this the, is so cool. The pattern of the environment is is hypnotizing as you press your way in, and you see the webbing growing thicker up ahead. Whoa, man! This is okay. Okay, um, we gotta walk. We'll start walking. We'll keep walking. Flamberg. Uh, let me get up. Make sure I'm close to the front here. Uh, oh, it opens up into a larger cavern. If you're claustrophobic, this might be a little scary. Mm. Oh, the coloring is so cool. Okay. Uh, it looks like some large. Uh, wait, maybe I should colors. stealth ahead. Yeah, two roads diverged, maybe. Wait, we get to the. Wait, I see a skeleton. Should we go to the north? I see a body. To the south. We were supposed to look for a giant body, and I see one yes, right there. Yes, there is one. Right Where there. do you see it? To the right. north? No, to the east, south. directly east of me. Southeast. Southeast. All right, hold on. Let me see. I am. I'm dead. Send me a attempt to stop be, talking. Be cool. Be careful. I, I will. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Right. Full, full. full. <laughs> uh, all right, I rolled a 20 stealth. Excellent. You may proceed. Okay, and where's the body again? Straight east of me, straight across. Is it really straight across? Like, yeah. go to the north. Oh, there's one, because there's, Look, there's go a where skeleton I am, to the south. go straight east Two. of me. Where are you? Mm, right here. All right, so. Oh, you're right. There's one to the south as well. Like here? Ah, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Giant, I now know they could speak. Look for the scroll case. Right, quiet. You'll be quiet. Let me just inch ever closer. Uh, I'm gonna move up a little bit. Do a perception yeah, check I... just to make sure. You may. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything not dead? <laughs> Freak me out, stop. Not a great <laughs> roll. Um, it's gonna be a <clears throat> 12 perception. Uh -huh. Clank, 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 clank. I drop my crossbow. <laughs> Sorry. Quiet. All right, I'm going. You do not spot anything that catches your eye yet. The There are remains of large shent corpses. All seem to be uh, over, covered over in, in gem-spangled webbing and uh, left to molder for, for millennia. Um, there is webs covering everything here. And as you press into a more dense patch of it, the webs try and cling to you. And the tensile strength of them is surprising. I need you to make a acrobatics or athletics check to avoid being caught oh, within uh, them. Uh, 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 11. Uh, oh, wait, um, but you... Still have guidance? Oh, you can only use it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a single. The webs start to cling to you and wrap around you, and suddenly you feel your movement restrained <sighs> as you're caught up in them. And you look back at your companions with some concern. My mask changes to that of a concerned face. <laughs> Are you stuck? Do you need us to come over there? Uh, Ignatius is going to move up slowly. He seems fine. Looks good. Yeah. He's creeping dancing. around the oh, corner nice. of this large, like, column up toward where J. Cool is. Mm. Uh, you know what? I can't remember. I think I put, I'm pretty sure I have a dagger on my character sheet. Let me double check. As you're looking around for the rest I of do. you. I do. I do have a dagger. Here and there, within the cave, you spy vaguely humanoid shapes wrapped up in the glittering webbing. Large skeletal forms the size of giants. Oh, my God. It is apparent that no kind of living traveler has been here in ages. Two of these clusters of webbed detritus catch your eye in particular. Uh, Flomberg, one that you can see that's around here. Oh, yeah. Where it looks as if there's something glinting in the, the light. Maybe something metallic adorned ancient filigree, perhaps. Um, that's that's protruding out from a bulbous mass of glittering webs. And then far ahead, you see in the distant recesses of the cave what looks like a hunched, large skeletal figure wreathed in sparkling gossamer, oh. which clutches something to its chest. That's it, that's it, that's it. I'm gonna start- That's further to the southeast. Moving down to the southeast. I'm gonna follow Flomberg as he moves, gosh, hoping that gosh, he hits wait. a spider web first. Wait. And I'm going to try to cut him out of the webs, aid his check yeah. to get out of the outside of outside of combat. No roll required. You can okay. liberate. You can liberate Jake. But 
you do gather that if you were to get caught up in these webs, it would be perhaps dangerous. Yeah. Can I do like a... Just have to keep an eye out. Controlled fire Controlled burn? Bolt? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, nothing too crazy, but like singeing in front of Flomberg as he walks, just so like he doesn't... I love the Metro games. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you, you, he was able to cut me out? Yes. Okay. I'm going to work my way around behind yeah. Flomberg and let um, Amunet clear a path for us. I'm worried about shaking the webs, alerting the owner of the webs. I think the owner of the webs is long dead. They could we'll face vibration here. I don't know they feel. You sense there may be some truth to those words, Flomberg, as you look at the cavern ahead of you, and in the center of it, you see something that looks like the calcified remains of some large creature. At my feet here? Uh, some or ways further. to the southeast of you, in, in where the, the cavern opens up a little bit. Oh. Uh, all right, if the webbing has been cleared by firebolts, I will step through so I can get a better look. It's just a little more light. This place is so much bigger than I originally thought it yeah, was. This yeah, this is, you could get lost. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, we're off pretty far away from each other. I'm gonna, we're all together. We're I'm going to pause the you? game here for a moment. Oh, dear. Um, because there's something I should describe to you at this moment. Although, before I do that, let me just check. Troy, do you intend for Jake to be back a little ways, or do you want to um, be uh, a little bit closer to your allies? Yeah, I'm going to go closer to my allies. Did, did you guys all go to straight down? They went south, yeah. They None went. of you went around the other way? All right, Jake's going to actually cut his way through to the other side. There. Okay. And you want to be there? Yeah. Okay. okay. So at this moment, um, as you are passing through this central cavern, um, let's see... Just checking your passive perceptions for a moment. Don't do that. Eh. Well, it's <laughs> not do it's not super high, but it is enough that you notice um, Eminent at your feet. Um, what you had originally thought was mere crystal. You look down and you identify it as having form and structure. Oh. It looks like the splayed out legs of some sort of creature calcified in the ground just next to you. Oh, whoa. And as you are taking in the, the the fact that this must have at some point been a living thing, a cluster of crystal Flongberg at your feet shifts and oh. moves and oh. emerges out into oh. a spider-like form oh. Oh my gosh. that lurches at you. And then Ignatius from behind you. No. Oh no, oh no. Another oh, no. crystal emerges oh, and crystal around spiders. Crystal spiders. the cavern all around you little crystals oh my start God. springing into life oh and I God. need you all to please roll initiative <sighs> okay oh God. that's wow. crystal spiders I'm seeing attacked by a David Bowie album <laughs> <laughs> and I get a plus one let me make sure that the combat encounter was reset before you uh, yeah it was not reset so I'm if someone already rolled, I will I will retain your initiative roll, Jake, which was good. I will honor that. But mm -hmm. let me reset the uh, combat encounter um, here for you by adding you each to the tracker. All right. And, Jake, you rolled an 18, which 18 for Jake. very good. Uh, All right. Here <clears throat> we go. Come on, Ignatius. Oh, my God. <laughs> I sink. And I get a plus one. <laughs> Plus two. You have advantage on it. Oh, I advantage. have advantage because it was it was the um, the intoxicated state which was giving you sort of a, a heady buzz. No. Well, I'm drunk. Um, Andrew, I believe I. So yesterday, in my hit points, my hit points were listed as twenty out of twenty. Mm -hmm. Another listed as eighteen out of twenty after we took that rest. But I thought that he cooked again. You shouldn't it be twenty out of twenty? Yeah, let's see. It should be, yeah, it should be 20 out of 20. Oh, we have the plus two. Mine's 12 out of 14 because you yeah, have the you, plus Yeah, if you're, if you're short of full right now, go ahead and make sure that your hit points are up to full because you would have gained 
the uh, temporary as well as the maximum. Okay. Oh. All right, great. I had to manually. Add yeah, you can manually add those plus two. That's, oh, I that's didn't know a, you can manually. That's a good uh, a good max. note to do before this combat begins. Um, oh dear. <laughs> all right. Let's see. As crystal spiders, another one to the south of you, and another one to the west. They emerge out of their burrows and they leap into action. Combat is joined. Jake, I'm afraid you are surprised. <sighs> you did not have the perception to notice these creatures. Brutal. Um, the spiders themselves, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of music on here for us, um, are going to spring <laughs> into <laughs> spring into life uh, as they lurch towards you with uh, a surprising alacrity. Um, a quick description of what you see, if I may. A melodious twinkling percussion fills the air like the sound of softly cascading glass as you notice a medium-sized growth of crystals transform into a ten-eyed creature with eight spindly legs and two large articulated fangs. This horrible, oh, an, man. This horrible arachnid uh, resembles an enormous semi-translucent spider made of faceted purple moonstone, huh. which shimmers and scintillates in the scant light. Angry crystalline spikes decorate the extremities of its silicate form, and its ten loathsome eyes appear refracted with a dreadful arcane opalescence. The Chalicerith is going to spring towards you, Flomberg. Oh dear. The battle is joined and it is going to attempt to bite you um, before you have an opportunity to react. Oh, uh -huh. oh yeah. An 18 uh. is successful. You oh. suffer. <laughs> oh, weird. Wow. Uh, that should not be a D2. Let me fix that before I continue on. Four points of damage, uh, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, poison. Oh no. You got this, Flomberg. He does have this. Yay. Awesome. Uh, there is no further damage. The only rolls suffered. that I've succeeded on the last like six hours of play. <laughs> <laughs> like, Im important ones to succeed on, for though, sure. I would say. Um, all right. Uh, it then focuses its 10 eyes directly upon you. And as a bonus action, it's going to use bewildering gaze and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay. Uh, 12. Mm, that is a failure. Oh, no. And you take a, well, I will tell you what happens, I guess, when it applies. Until then, I'll keep you in the dark. Okay. But you feel suddenly slightly bewildered by the gaze of this uh, malevolent Creature. If it imposes any sort of penalty to my rolling, it's in vain. <laughs> it or surely it can go no lower. Um, it needn't bother. <laughs> the damage has been done. <laughs> One, another such creature uh, comes up on you quickly from behind Ignatius, oh. uh, leaping onto your back as you are unsuspecting of its presence. Oh, and gosh. It just barely does miss. You. Is that right? No? It. Actually, yeah, I, your fighting style somehow actually got toggled off. So that is a miss with your 19 armor class. Nice. Yes. Excellent. Nice. Um, Huge. Do you turn around or do you? Yeah. You turn around. Yeah, just, you turn around and you see its <laughs> eyes gazing, gazing straight into yours. I need oh. you to make a wisdom saving throw. He looks into its eyes. What are you? He's one, like his first thought is like, are these things undead? Because uh, nothing could live in here. And so he looks closely. And then he finds yeah. he's looking into their You're eyes. looking straight into its eyes. Big and it is mistake. Yeah. You dummy. Getting Ignatius. you with the gaze. <laughs> you said you wisdom that, saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. All right, come on. Ignatius is wise. Ignatius is wise, Andrew. Don't let this happen. This would be bad for the show. This oh, is bad. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to spend an inspiration on that. Okay. Yeah, he's wise, and he should be able to succeed at this and keep his head about him, his wits about him. Wow. Oh, I hate no. I hate myself. Oh no. You f you too uh, feel suddenly beset by a, a mesmerizing bewilderment, which I'll let you know what that does when it applies. Uh. <laughs> Another God, creature comes scurrying anything. over the corpse of its much larger calcified 
uh, Mother. Yeah, whatever whatever the creature that's dead was now, you are certainly glad that it is not attacking you, for it is much more, you guys see it much on the map? larger it's in size. It's so cool. Yeah. I um, wish I saw it earlier. And it, uh, this creature leaps at you, uh, making an attack. Ah, man, hitting. Man, I mean, God, double digits on every roll in yours. <laughs> yep, I'm... It's because of those oh. mean things you said when we were on break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hurt. Eminet, I need you to make a constitution saving throw as okay. a rider. Oh, wait, and I have disadvantage. You do have disadvantage. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop laughing! <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I'm having a bad time. Oh, no. Oh. I thought it was a 19. Oh. A 19. Yeah, the 19 yeah. would have carried the day, right. but uh, unfortunately, the 8 does not. And therefore, you feel the effects of poison coursing through Ugh. your veins. I'm sick. And you oh. suffer. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh my god. Six additional points of damage. Oh, I wish the cleric was here. Oh, I yes. wish she didn't leave the party. Very convenient that she decided to turn yeah. around. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> Who would want to go towards a cave in the rain? I think Andrew <laughs> wanted to end part four with a TPK! <laughs> I, I may have. Going to die. I may have. Well, Aminette, Flum, you, Flomberg, and Ignatius have all been surprised by this ambush. And so you spend your turns recovering from surprise. It is now Jake's turn. And they're, right. they're and all going to go gonna again attack before again. me. Yep, yeah. we're going to die. Jake is safe, and so he leaves the cave. Uh, no, Jake. <laughs> Skulks right, so out of the cave. Resurrect us later. Do I have a clear path uh, to uh, the the one that is next to Ignatius? Or do I have to You do, that? as long as you don't get stuck in the webs. Uh, so I have to roll acrobatics to move there? Um, for the path that you're taking, yeah, you would have well, to move I through a pretty a thick... Way, yeah, yeah you would have to move through a pretty thick so section webs. of webs. You could either roll acrobatics or athletics to try and bypass it, or you might risk getting stuck. All right, let's uh, do acrobatics and see if this is going to be a bad there you turn. Go. How oh. about a netted eye two? There yes. we go. You effortlessly uh, kind of pirouette through the webbing and avoid letting any of it cling to tenuously to you. Nice. Uh, and you make your way through and get opposite of Ignatius on either side of the spider. Beautiful. Um, okay, I have plenty of movement to get over there, and uh, let's just go straight to... St- to short sword, short sword o'clock. Okay. Uh, come on, Jake. Come on, it's flanked. Yeah, nice. That's a there hit. we go. That's, that is that is a awesome. hit. Twenty one is a hit. Awesome. All right, that's gonna be a little sneak attackage. Uh, all right, seven points of damage. Bad roll. Bad roll. Could have been better. Could have been better. It is something for sure. And the creature kind of, with a clacking noise, like of of crystalline rocks, almost like rating or smashing together and kind of turns towards you as you are clearly the new threat that is present. Um, anything else on your turn? Nope, that's it. Okay. E- yeah, that's it. The again. spider, the Chilicereth, is going to lunge at you, but first it, well, no, this, it's focusing its gaze on Ignatius, so it's going to, it's going to continue concentrating on that. So it is going to lunge at you, Jake, um, but it is going to lunge with the bite. Come get me! And that is a natty 18. Oh. <laughs> I need you to make a constitution saving throw as the fangs sink in, dealing five points of damage, but you feel the threat of poison which right. may course through your veins. Con's one of my best, but that's only gonna be a 13. You make the save. Okay, great. Oh, 13 that, is enough. One short. You shrug off, oh, you shrug off the effects of the venom. Uh, made um, of wind. Oh no, that was the venom. Oh no, that was, that that was the different. bewildering, oh, bewildering right. game. Uh, the the Chilicereth is gonna take a step south to kind of get out of the, the flanking and- I don't like that. Uh, then this other one is going to kind of scoot <laughs> around to get into a flanking oh, position oh, on, uh, going down. well, no, it's going to go for Flomberg, oh. um, and it's going to go in with the bite while it has its ally on the other side of it. Ooh, uh, thirteen, but uh. your armor is reduced to a thirteen oh, because great. of the flanking effect. Oh, great. Awesome, uh, right? And so oh, great. it is a hit. <laughs> um, you suffer four points of piercing damage oh, and gosh. a Constitution saving throw against the venom. Flomberg, okay. crystal venom. Flomberg. 
Yes, you succeed. Okay. You shrug it off. You are hardy against uh, this attack. Uh, however, you are attacked similarly from the other side by oh my God. The, uh, the other spider that is that is participating in this flanking action against you. Um, Sweet. That is a miss, even with the flanking. So um, it's going to move. It's going to shift up and around to here. Um, and that'll end its turn. Eminent, you are surrounded by clattering and clacking crystal spiders. That This kind of unsettling, chiming aura that they have as they move and their horrible gaze that has your allies feeling so unsettled. Yeah, sh- Eminet is going to move to the south to gain distance from them while they're all focused on everybody else. Okay, do you wish to disengage? Because if you don't, they may yeah. attack you. I, but that's my turn then, right? It is your action. So either you can stay put and do what you can in this threatened space, or you have to spend your action to disengage. I have a cool spell I want to do. Um, next round? Yeah. They have to stay where that they- That will be cool next round. They have to stay where they are. Um, they're going to come for you. I know. They're going to kill one of you, or they're going to come for me, but I can't do it right now because you'll all get hurt. For what too. it's worth, you can move one space to the south without leaving any of their- so, like, you were here, but you can be there without uh, leaving without leaving any of their threatened space. Let me measure. This cool spell is a 10-foot sphere, mm-hmm. so I would catch two of my allies in it. You would get two of your allies. That's true. Am um, I one of them? No. And do it. <laughs> they go for it. And then do it. Do it. Uh, let me look. That kind of messes up what I wanted to do. So let me see what else I could whip up without just having to disengage, because that feels like a waste. Which ones have been hit? The one on the west side nearest to Jake has suffered a a wound. The others are yet untouched because Jake has been the first of your allies to act. All right, guys, here's the thing. I have three hit points left. You're fine. So do you want me to hit something? You want me to hurt you guys with a big spell? Can you heal yourself? No. Then I'd say fight to the death. I might do my big spell. Do the big spell. And maybe hurt Flomberg and... Hurt we, we can't afford any damage. Okay, then I'm not. Then I'll do an Eldritch Blast um, against. And there's a way you could move. You can disengage. Take the attack. Three hit points. You can, you can get out of there. But where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Just get out of that horrible All right, situation. Okay. I'll I disengage. Would think. And then you could come in at a better angle to drop that spell next round. Or maybe to the north. Like, if you go <laughs> past where I am and. Um, Joe Cool is, or Jake Cool is. It's Jake Cool. <laughs> then, like, they're not going to go past both of us to get to you. You know what I mean? But if you go south, they can just go right to you. Yeah, the issue is, like, all of my bigger spells originate from me. So if I go past you guys, I'm not going to be able to move. And I mean, it's just, it kind of messes up, like, casting the spell in the direction I want to cast it in. So I'm going to move to the south. I'm going to move. Disengage. Yeah, disengage. My full move. I can move my full movement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and don't I'm, alert any more spiders down I there. hope I don't. <laughs> I'm going to move. The other thing. And you know what? I'll tuck a little bit towards the corner of the room so that I'm kind of out of their line of sight. They think I've run away. Awesome. Yeah. Not the most eventful turn, but probably the smart choice. Yeah. Um, well, but also, out. would you be out of my line of effect Like if I wanted to heal you? I'm gonna run back in on my next turn, but do you want to heal me on your round? You have. You I'm, do, I'm not super psyched to heal you. You got to do damage. Do yeah. damage. Okay. Flomberg, over to you. Okay. You are feeling the effects of exhaustion, but you are beset by these horrible creatures. Can I rage if I'm exhausted? You can. Okay. No difference. Uh, so I, th- I think I see no reason why you can't. I know in Pathfinder you can't, but I don't know. It's two different games. Uh, I'm going to. He will rage as he. Uh, unslings his great axe. Nice. And uh, I am going, he's going to swing it at the southern moor one as I close my... In case it affects your strategy and, and you do whichever you want, but do be aware that the one to the north is flanked between you and Ignatius. Oh, I'm, yeah, I can't see. Uh, okay, so yes, I will go ahead and do that one. Uh, so shut up! <laughs> He's exhausted. <laughs> He's uh, too tired to. Oh! oh, 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 oh 
natural girl. 20. You That's have had what that we've coming. been waiting oh, for. You had that so coming hard we... from last session. We... All of That's the bad what karma. we've been waiting for from Flumber. You stored it up for a week, and now you come ready with only 20s. Yeah. <laughs> Let's oh, do this. Phenomenal. Yeah! Whoa, what a huge wow. damage! Box. Huge damage! 20, 27 Andrew's points face. of damage! Box of bars. Wow! Wow! Flumper <laughs> doesn't fuck around. <laughs> uh, for real. How would you like to annihilate this spider? Yes! One uh, shot! Yeah, so, so with the flat of the blade, he like smashes it and shards of crystal go flying everywhere. Yes. Uh, all of them perfectly uh, aimed so that they dispatch each of his companions in turn. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how he dies. Yep. And that's Amazing. how the, that's how the, the, uh, the limited the series ended. ended. Um, well, this <laughs> this particular Chalicerith is no more, and you are no longer feeling disoriented. As it dies, so too does the bewilderment that had afflicted oh, you. Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, wow, that's huge. Interesting. Oh, yeah, but I didn't see any effect day. of the b bewilderment. Yeah, right? we didn't, didn't see it happen it, yet. It did come up, but not in a material way. Okay. Uh, you would have had a reduction to your attack roll, but you rolled a natural 20, so. Oh, great. Uh, I see, okay. Awesome. Didn't matter. Sweet. I was waiting to screw you over with it. <laughs> uh, at the moment, it would just break your spirit. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been bad. It didn't uh That's some cool that shit, way. Andrew. That's awesome. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna step one space to the south, just okay. so I'll be harder to flank. Mm -hmm. Prudent. Well done, Flomberg. Ignatius, it is over to you. Uh, Flomberg has eliminated one of the creatures, but you don't know how many more are in here, and um, certainly Aminet is in some peril, but yeah, got one in front of you that is asking for it. Yeah, uh, but if I... Can I take a step and not provoke an attack of opportunity? Uh, depends on where you step. I just wanted to step down there yeah. to flank you with can even Flumber. step again it's like as long as you don't move away from a space the creature could hit so like you could even keep oh, so you can rotate around a yeah creature you could go all the way around as long uh, as you're not leaving it's uh all right well it's threatened i'd area. like to turn away from it and try to hit this one that's flanked okay. with flomberg yeah um okay i'm going to uh first i'm going to enact my speed so that i can get the dodge bonus uh my my God, my, my brain. Your metabolism? Uh, yeah, my, yes, my extreme metabolism. So I will use that mm -hmm. and get the benefits of dodge, and then I will attack this. Uh, oh, you you asked us to do this, and I never... It's all right. It has not, it. It's, it's not been any problem. There we uh, go. I did it. You did. I targeted the spider with a war hammer. Nice. I think some blunt force trauma to this crystal Seems spider like the should, right thing to should do. be good. Let's go. Come on, good roll, Ignatius. Come on, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, but no. <laughs> that is a miss. Enjoy the rest of your game. <laughs> good luck. Farewell, Joe. Uh, yeah, that's his round. Oh my god, I hate it. I hate rolling. Just crap to make sure every single that, round. Just to make sure that I break your spirit. Uh, Roll me a 1d4. Uh, I don't know how to just do a random 1d4. How do I do that? In chat, you can do slash r. Slash r. And then space 1d4. 1d4. Mm, yeah, so your attack roll is actually lowered by 2, and you rolled an 8. Oh, not a oh 10, no. So you really missed. Oh, my Wow, gosh. so it goes down 1d4. Uh, it's anti-guidance. It's anti, it's anti-bless. It's Bewilderment, anti-guidance, anti, anti Top of the round, Jake. It is your turn. Oh, man, watch these. Or bless. Watching these allies struggle. Um, Struggling. All right, I'm going to... Uh, yeah. I'm going yeah. to move to there. Do I have to technically uh, disengage in order to not no. provoke? No. You okay. do not. You're uh, staying I mean, within its its reach. Think about it. At least it's second level now. I can move like with reckless abandon. So I'm just going to slide back into flanking and uh, drop some pain with the short sword. Drop that pain. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it was on a 20. Oh. It was on a 20. <laughs> I saw it and I thought, uh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Oh. Rogues don't Must get a be second nice attack to be flomber. Yeah. until 18th level. So <laughs> at 18th level, uh, I get a second attack. Oh, so that's, cool. that's my, that's my turn. Wow. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's the, it's the bewildering myriad color of this place. It's just like, 
the light gleamed in your eye at the Fair wrong footing. moment. Um, the Chalicerath is going to turn towards you as you have missed and try and bite at you, Jake Cool. No. Oh. Oh, man. oh my. Absolute rocks. Uh, rocks. Uh -huh. Ah. Well, I have to go for Troy after he was giving me oh. shit for not doing any damage to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. This whole time. I'm taking one point of damage. Uh, oh. You take seven points of damage, oh. and I need you to take a constitution saving throw oh. on top of that. I think Troy already failed a con save oh, today. God. Yeah. Rocks again with a con You're save. You're good with go. the con save, though, okay. so no no poison. Um, Aid of wind. The southern... The, the Shalicerith to the south is going to attack uh, Flomberg in front of it. Um, and that is... A miss. Hey, hey! All right! All right, we're good. We're good. You are a little bit alarmed, however, Aminette, to see a crystal cluster to the south of you. Oh, I knew you were gonna do that! Into a spider which begins making its way towards you. Oh, I don't no. think that's Lunges. true. <laughs> I don't think that's no. true. Roll, roll for disbelieving. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a hundred. Uh-huh. Wow. It's an illusion. Game, are you... Well, it lunges. <laughs> I rolled in a hundred. It lunges at you with protruding, <laughs> gleaming fangs. And I say, "Don't, don't, don't! I'm almost dead anyway." And oh. it misses by yes. one. By oh, wow. one. Now you have to spend your next round disengaging. Oh, I'm gonna kill you. You should have just brought up no. where we already knew. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. It is your turn. I'm gonna now. kill you. Oh, I'm killing you. I'm just going to do my big spell that I wanted to do. I wanted to catch more mm. in it, but it's too dangerous with yeah. this up close and personal combat. Uh, but hey, it's the last episode. <laughs> I'm doing my big spell. Um, all right. I'm doing Arms of Hadar. Oof. You invoke the power of Hadar, the dark hunger. So you see, oh. I just imagine, I, I hate to reference other things, like the Baldur's Gate uh, 3, like, <gasps> yeah. like she just goes almost like Super Saiyan, on uh -huh. all this like black smoke surrounds her, and then in a 10 foot sphere around her, just necrotic energy, boof, <laughs> shoots out. Amazing. You have to make some sort of save. Yeah, Strength just, saving throw, interesting. You can interesting. click the, uh, the spell in your spell book, and it will play it to chat, oh. and I will make the save. It's telling me to cast. Oh, I guess I have to cast it first and then you make the save? That's right. Oh, I see, I see. That's I have right. to put down the area. You can. I mean, I know what the area is, but Arms if you want to. Yeah, perfect. Hadar. Oh, is it Hadar? Hadar? Arms Hadar? Hadar? of Bill Hader. <laughs> You're Hader. embraced by one of America's <laughs> finest comic guys. Uh, amazing. <laughs> The Chalicerin. Roll a strength save. Roll, roll a will save. Oh, it succeeds. It takes. It, it takes. Half damage. Half damage. Half damage. Rats. All right. That would have been really cool if it died. Oh, hey, great oh, damage, wow. though. That's about as great, good as you could do. Great damage, yeah. Uh, it takes half and looks hurt by it. Um, um, uh, I'll just stay. I'll just stay. I can't risk an opportunity attack. I'll just go down. It's risky. Yeah, I'll just stay and hope it misses again. Okay. There's another one down here, 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 here. I'm gonna die. Flomberg. Die, die. <laughs> die. Flomberg, so he's flanking with this yes. creature here. Right. So just uh, another natural 20 would be great. That would be awesome. Doing a uh, straight attack or? Uh, it, what are my options? Oh, well, you tell me. <laughs> I don't know the game. <laughs> I just didn't know if you were attacking recklessly or not. Oh, recklessly, right. I forgot about that. Yes, I actually will do a reckless attack. What's the reason to not do a reckless attack? Because then I'm exposed. So I okay. get advantage oh, yeah. so on them, but they get advantage on me. If you're, yeah, if you're in a vulnerable position, like if you're totally surrounded by lots of enemies. Or Battery, if, yeah. Yeah. But Flumberg only has one enemy next to yeah. him. So it's, yeah. But if you get a sense that you could kill an enemy. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like power attack. Yeah. Like in Pathfinder, yeah. you get more... For lower AC. Lower AC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh! Natural 20. Oh, yeah! yeah! He did it again! Yes! With a natural because one. With a natural one Because on the of side. the reckless attack, wow. because the first the first D20 you rolled was the one, was and the then the one. 20 was the second. So. Wow. Oh my God. Critical hit. Thank you for reminding him. Critical hit with the Andrew. reckless attack. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Let's get some serious damage. Yep. Uh, wow. Yeah, big difference. It's not the sort of showstopper the last one was. No. Um, but, uh, in fact, it's not enough to one-shot the creature, uh, but uh, uh, it does do a heavy blow. Uh, and this spider is now looking badly wounded. Um, anything else on your turn? Uh, that, so with, uh, with my bonus action, can I 
Can I do anything useful in here? At the level you are, and as the subclass of barbarian you are, I think your only bonus action right now is actually activating your rage. I'm, I'm looking at your sheet. I don't think you have any other bonus action at this time. Okay, then then I'm done. Yeah, one of the key build character build challenges for a barbarian is like figuring out how to get better bonus action economy. Yeah. Um, some classes have a lot of bonus actions. Barbarians, not so much. Um, Ignatius. Flomberg has, uh, Flomberg Flomberg has Flomberg, badly yeah. wounded this creature seeing between Flomberg him. have weakened this thing, he's going to try to put it out. Uh, try to finish it off. Gotta get a hit in here. You gotta roll a minus 1d4 for me as your situational bonus, or in this case, <laughs> malice on your attack roll. This sucks! <laughs> yeah. It's so painful to have to do, too. Like, because, like, what if I roll, like, a natty 15? That's mm-hmm. like, and you missed. Like, God! Yeah, even a minus 1. All right, situational bonus. I can do negative, negative 1d4, 1D4 and it'll do it yeah, automatically. that's right. That's correct. Uh, and should I let everyone see this? Should it be a public roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go public. Yeah, right. Fail to, in front of us. Let's <laughs> fail in front of you. Come on. Natural 20, let's go. I <laughs> think I resulted in a negative number. <laughs> it's a seven. Come on! <laughs> it's a seven. And it I've rolled nothing above a six this you, episode. You got whatever Skid had last time. Yeah. Oh. That was so crucial, too, it's because just, now I have... This, yeah. It has advantage against me if it wants to I know. To attack that's me. why I was like, I'm going to stop everything I'm doing to just try to take this thing out. Well, who knows? Maybe Jake will come seal the deal because Jake can get away from where he is. We'll see. Jake, it's your turn. All right. Uh, still got this one here that's barely taking any damage. Uh, but should, that one is on you, the ropes. You're flanking it. You should You should take... Yeah, that. I mean... That's my best chance. So I'm going to just keep going after this one here. Okay. Come on. Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. Jake from State Farm. Oh, yes. That there we good. go. Yeah, 20 yeah. is a hit. All right. Yes. Sound hit to this creature. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't move. I need that sneak attack. Damn, Zony. Come on! All right. Uh, again, dude, seven can't points get of damage. anything cooking. Uh, again, the creature's damage badly wise. wounded, uh, and it may it needs to take, make a concentration check. Oh, 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 oh! Could break the bewilderment. It does break the. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Get right. cool. So, Get cool. Ignatius, you <laughs> no longer feel bewildered as right, great. Its concentration Beautiful. is broken. Nice. So so together can, again. So, so I can know exactly what's going on when Flumberg dies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll be It'll well be, aware. You, you'll be prescient of that moment. Um, <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Jake? Uh, no, I'm gonna stay there. Okay, the spider's turn. Let's deal with Aminette first. <sighs> this going is so, to try this is just and to watch. get you. You know, honestly, Aminette, it's gonna first try and get you with the bewildering gaze. Interesting. Um, kind of put the fear in you before it pounces. Uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Okay, with disadvantage. Uh, yes, because your intoxication. This is my intoxication. You're All drunk. Right. I'm drunk. Drunk on the job! Come on, come on, come on. Whoa! Oh, what a roll! Spectacular. Wow. Wow. Uh, you, wow. Shoot, you, you resist the effect, and then it tries to bite at you. It's crazy that I have such luck with wisdom because I'm not that wise. Bite, no. however, does Hit. land. Ugh. And I'm afraid that the five points down. of damage brings um, you down to the state of unconsciousness. Yep. Ugh. Tough. Um, <sighs> that is the southern spider. If she goes unconscious, does that mean poison doesn't have any effect at that point because she's unconscious? It would be sort of a simultaneous hit. So, like, whether the the poison's not enough to kill her outright. So, when you fail the poison roll, you just take one hit of damage, and that's it. Like, there's not something that is... Yeah, so there might be a sage advice out there or something that would tell me, like, oh, no, the poison's actually a second attack, and that means it's a death save failure. But that doesn't quite seem right to me. That doesn't feel right. Sorry, that's not... Well, that's not what I'm asking now. What I'm asking now is like th- this poison is just kind of like you you roll each time. It's a time rider fail, damage take, whenever the bite HP. happens. Yes, right. So it's not like it's in. It's not a recurring each round. You're rolling. It's not a lasting condition. Got yeah, it, that's got right. It. Um, it's kind of there are poisons that work that way, but this is more of like a one time jolt. Is this like bonus damage yeah. to the bite? Basically, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Flomberg. You're in a battle to the death okay. with this, uh, you got this creature. This now, Flomberg. You got oh, it, it is going to have advantage against advantage you. Against so I'm going to anyway. roll a Might. second time to see in case it's a crit. Yeah. It's it not a crit. No. Um, so it is a hit, though, and you suffer four points of damage, and I need you to make a con save against the poison. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Mm. Oh. 
even Flomberg's prodigious constitution has its limits. <laughs> uh, and so, Flomberg, you suffer an additional oh! 10 oh my God. points of poison damage. I'm down to one. Horses right? That can't be right. No, you're down to 11. Oh. You're, you're doing great. You're, okay. you're, you're pretty good. You're beefy. Um, Full of beef. Remember, the, the bite parts have been being halved by your rage. Oh, mm. I, the poison Again. you take full. I don't know how rage works either, so <laughs> I um, figure it's good. I have to turn it on. The <laughs> last doing everything for spider you. Yeah. Of, the, of the three that survive is going to lunge at Jake. Jake's got a low AC. Uh-huh, that's a hit. Oof. Yep. And a con save for Jake. Yep. As con. you take six points and the poison threatens to bring you down. I have four hit points left, and I think now is when I'm going to fail this con save. I can just feel Come it. Come on. I can just feel. No, it. no, twenty-one. Oh. Wow. Look at you, you shrug it off and live to fight another turn. Aminette, I need you to make a death saving throw, please, on your character sheet yep. below your hit dice. If you click that skull, and it's so scary when you yeah, hover over it, I it know, turns red. No, the. All right, here we go. It's trying to seal your fate. Do I do this at disadvantage? No. Okay. This is, <laughs> but you would roll it as a private GM roll. Ah. <laughs> Let me just, oh right, I have to poker face like we've yeah, all yeah, done yeah. before. This is my first time, okay. Eminet. <laughs> Eminet suddenly eyes open and she jolts up. Oh. Natural returning 20. Returning wow. to one hit point <gasps> and no longer unconscious. Wow. Oh wow. my god. She is so tough. Yeah. That wow. is your turn, but That's my it's whole a, turn. It is it's at the end of your turn that you come back. Can but we say that I don't make a big deal about it so the spider doesn't know? I just kind of flip my eyes and then I'm like I'll let you uh, play dead. I'll let you roll a stealth check. <laughs> you have disadvantage though. Because right. you're intoxicated. <laughs> I'm still intoxicated. <laughs> God, I didn't sleep at all. Yeah, that uh, the, that four second, second nap wasn't long enough to sober up. I died and came back. My heart stopped. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, I thought you had it for a second. Almost there. had it. Almost oh. had it. All right, maybe. You're, you're attempting to be stealthy. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, it's much better than being unconscious, though. Being at one hit point is a much better situation to be in. Flomberg. All right. So Flomberg is he, he's struggling. <laughs> he's very badly hurt. His character sheet has disappeared again <laughs> and <laughs> he is he's it is rage is genuine he's, he's bewildered he's, he's lost so, so confused and it's just like i keep telling you stop, stop. at least these spiders are making sound so yeah. there's at least like some rationale weird yeah. crystal scrapey sound yeah. yeah and he is going to reckless attack again all right on. Yeah, that's a hit. There we there go. We go. Oh, okay. Okay. It has, okay. it has but right. one hit point, so your oh, damage roll is, is, had one hit is wow. performative at this point. Oh, you can tell me God. how you dispatch this creature. He goes, Shut up! And he he actually he doesn't even like swing the axe. He just like boom, like brings his oh, gigantic of it. boot down <laughs> uh, onto his onto its head, which shatters. Crunch, and with the, this <laughs> cracking of glass and crystal, it, it explodes into fragments and is no more. Awesome. Amazing. And Needed that. I'm going to stay put since I have, I will have advantage against me. So I'm just going to stay put where I am for the moment. Okay. Ignatius, you have this spider. It is very wounded, but so is your companion, Aminet. And you can't delay in this game, right? You can't delay. You have to make a decision now. You can hold an action, but you have to elect what you're doing right now. I'm also hurt. <laughs> Um, Tell you my real name. <laughs> oh my god, this is a pain that I can't delay. This stinks. You can't delay even when your ally is going next. You can't just like switch in the initiative. Afraid not. <laughs> okay, uh, I am. Man. I'm gonna try to smash this thing. Okay, take yeah. it out. I think we can finish it off here. Uh, I, I, I have to hit one of these damn rolls. This is just nuts. I think you're going to miss. I think I'm going to hit. Why would you tell them that? Where's the there we go. Okay. Where's the camaraderie? There, there it is. You <laughs> land the a telling blow. Uh, all right. And no penalty. Let's rock. Come on. Give me something juicy this time. Yes. Nope. It's not a great but damage roll, but five. it was already so wounded. That is sufficient damage to dispatch. I yes. thought it was that close. Yes. yes. Bam. He smashes it down. Chipaw, pow. 
Shapow pow, and then he will uh, run with all haste over to threaten the other. Uh, yes, spider. so can you get smart. Get behind it. Uh, well, no, I can. You can. Well, wow. you should. That won't provoke. There's no. There's no surviving spider to uh, provoke from him. Well, shouldn't you let Jake do it if he? On his turn, because he would. Yes. He can dash over there, right? Yeah. With the, and then he would get the. Sneak yeah, so I'll just stop right next to it. Okay. I, if Jake wants to, I know he's hurt, but uh, I don't know if he can kill this thing in a single yeah, now, blow. Now we're surrounding the I would spider. Just, I just yeah. wanted to draw tables, its attention to me for one round, maybe. The tables have turned, and Jake, it is your turn. There's but one Chalicerath surviving. Eminent is in some trouble. What would you like to do? drops uh, the sword, pulls out the short bow where he's threatening. I'll still get the sneak attack damage. It's mm-hmm. gonna amount to be the same and then it keeps me a little safe. So let's see what we can do. Ta-da! Nice. Yes. Hey, it's that's a hit. Right. It is a hit. Yeah. Nice. A little sneak attack. How good will the damage roll be? Uh, uh, one more climb, than you will have to get point <laughs> uh, I'm glad I didn't run up there. The creature is not slain. Kill it! Oh, it <laughs> is going to get a turn. Oh, um, and it feels like it has prey that it can can get at. So. Oh, is it this? It's going for the <laughs> it's going for the prostrate eminent, which since you're prone, it attacks with advantage. It's going for her prostrate? Don't go for my prostrate, <laughs> I have to have it checked. No, uh, no, 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 no prostrate! You don't want Eminet, a spider in there! I'm so sorry, but yeah. you, don't want to you, see are, that. you are once again rendered unconscious. Yeah, she goes, uh, she opens her eyes. Um, oh. yeah, <laughs> just in time to fall back down again. Foolish spider, I told um, you to attack me! Ah! <laughs> Eminent, you will need to make a death saving throw again this time, and as you do that, we can come over to Flomberg. Hopefully, you'll be able to be rescued by your allies. Oh, I did it public. No one look. Oh, no one look. No. Oh, I'm not looking. It's okay. It's okay. It's I forgivable. It's I, forgivable. I looked. Uh, and then I Flomberg about it. charges across the cave floor with a sound like a a, a used ice cream truck full of George H. W. Butch commemorative spoons. <laughs> Uh, rolling at top speed down that that windy street in, uh, in San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, I know that street. Not yeah. the Holland Drive. No, it's, no, what's it called? San Francisco. I know the one you're talking about. Lombards. Lombard yeah, Street. Lombard, Lombard Street. Lombard Street. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just Remember, hear those just George hear H.W. Bush spoons. You can hear those around. spoons. They make a very specific sound. <laughs> it is, yeah, that's so you, it's just because recognize it's just because this is pre-alpha that you don't have that sound in. Yeah. Sound yeah. Sound. <laughs> yes, the George like, H.W. Bush Why isn't spoons? that? Why isn't that? Why I want each of right these now? sounds incorporated as I describe them. Please. Those spoons. Well, we future updates. Those are Bush spoons. We have some Kickstarter stretch goals that we haven't announced yet. <laughs> well, you've got some George new ones. George H.W. Bush spoon sounds. Is it used ice cream truck yeah. full of spoons? How did you know? I, like we hadn't told anyone about that. Sirenscape has the used ice cream truck full of George H.W. commemorative spoons. I actually bet that's true. Down Lombard uh, Street. I bet California. that's true. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do <laughs> reckless attack once again. Come on. Natural oh, 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. Yeah. Three. Amazing. These things go in, in waves. They clearly. sure do. Yeah. They really do. Shut up. When you're hot, you're hot. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. 23 points shut up. of damage. You points tell the spider to shut up in the most emphatic way possible, <laughs> and it is just annihilated. Yeah. Yes. Underneath your yes. And uh, blessedly, a <laughs> silence comes over the, the cavern uh, as you have a moment to recuperate oh. and regain your strength. Someone is going to need to I'm tend to Amunet, who is unconscious. Uh, well, let's go find that cleric. We need a fourth. Yes. <laughs> what the hell? This is beyond my skill to yes. Everybody help me. What the hell? I will make a feast of her tonight. What? what? Uh, I will... Oh, by the way... Apologies to everyone for how much I butchered lay on hands. <laughs> I didn't realize the lay on hands rules, but I got it now. Andrew uh, corrected me. It so wasn't I'm going to lay deal. on hands for one hit point for the All moment. Right. Oh, uh, Eminent to comes to you up. Why just one? Because I can do whatever I want. You're right. This is a fantasy <laughs> world for all of us. Sorry that I tried to control your player, uh, your character. All right. So he opens her eyes. <gasps> Ignatius, I thought I saw you, but then I was dreaming, and then a spider bit me, and then I died twice. Yes, there was one over here as well. Make sure there's no more. 
And uh, he's going to stalk around her a little bit, going walking 10, 15 feet past her mm-hmm. and just scanning and doing a perception roll for any additional that might be hiding out to jump us. All right. Yeah, make that perception check. You do that. I'm going to crawl. I'm going to curl up in a ball on the ground. Oh, hey. Nice. Nice roll. That's all right. Yeah. You look into the distant recesses of the cave and it's difficult to tell because part of the natural camouflage of these crystal of these spiders is their ability to kind of retract into a ball that looks just like a crystalline protrusion. It's like aliens. And it, it, in the, it makes you feel incredibly in paranoid yeah. about this space because as you look into the recesses of the cave, it's very difficult to know what could be threat and what could just be the natural crystalline growth of this environment. But what is clear based on your perception role as you look around is that there's nothing that seems like a spider that is about to join the fray. So it, at least for now, it seems like you're in a safe space, a safe relatively speaking. You also notice the particular pieces of remains that were highlighted before, the chest piece of armor that was glistening with some filigree and mm. the the remains of the Shent skeleton that seems to be clutching something protectively to its chest. Yeah, where is that skeleton exactly now? Um, so that one is to the south over here. And the one with the armor that I mentioned is, uh, Let's see, where is that one? Oh, it's this one. It's this one just to the north of you that you passed previously. Ah, oh, I want to go to the one clutching the chest. But see. I think we should. Uh, can we just take a short rest? Oh, yeah, can we could we do that and I'll uh, get some yeah. hit, hit dice? I think you can. And I think that's probably a good moment for us also to take a short rest. Yes. Oh, okay. As we'll short go rest. to break. I need some we'll come back for the, <laughs> the home stretch. Yeah. Uh, episode four after this break. Um, and thank you so much for watching. And please, while we're on break, go to the Kickstarter page, check Great it out, uh, see all the awesome stuff that we have, watch the video, um, be amazed by all the, the amazing stuff you can get by supporting Ember on Kickstarter. And we will be back in just a moment to conclude this episode. And we're back. Hello, and thank you for joining us thus far. We are here for the home stretch of our limited series of Ember on the Glass Cannon Network. Yes. yes. Thank you so much to all of you at the table and to the amazing production crew that I've also yeah! had the chance to meet. Yeah. Yeah. CJ, um, Francis, Matt. CJ, Francis, great work. and Matt. Great really work. Wish they could flicker the lights like on stage. To work with. <laughs> um, they've made this process so easy for me. Like I am- Turn the camera on and off. Yeah, yeah. I, am, I am new to this this experience of doing like a produced live show. Yeah. Um, and what? So, Get out of here. I can't <laughs> tell it all. You were this me. old pro? This Come old I love, I love game mastering, but this is new. So, yeah. Um, it's different. It's yeah, definitely it's different. different. Yeah, it's it a different thing. You can um, tell you're an excellent game master. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very totally. good at pacing and like revealing things in a surprising way. No, you know and, what? And, you know and what? also like being a jerk at the right time. Yeah. I was going to say, good at it. he's really good at dealing with us. Yeah, Because I too. think we have a very particular play style <laughs> and we go real off course sometimes. And he just sits there patiently. Patiently. He just and sits then, there, like waits for us to exhaust ourselves with our idiocy. Like a child. <laughs> like children. Yeah. children. I have two toddlers fall asleep. Oh, Yeah, that's, yeah. that's uh, the experience you need. And that's so, the experience that's you, most applicable. You nicely like take our hand yeah. and like lead us back to the table and then you kill us uh, yeah. for just a lesson. Or try to, you know. Well, you know what's also fun is like this goes back to uh, Last Pax Unplugged where we That's you know right. we have get-togethers yeah. for our industry friends and, uh, you know, you and I get to chat and, and this is where I first really hear about Ember and you're like, you know, we should maybe do something about that. So to have, to see it all come to fruition now eight months later, it's just really cool because I remember our initial conversation. Yeah, every it. once in a while when someone approaches you at a con and puts their arm on your shoulder and is like, Troy, <laughs> let me tell you about our project. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, 
Wow, it actually is a real project. Yeah, yeah. 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 this is one of those rare instances. Yeah. It actually where turns into real, something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not always, but uh, every once in a while. Well, I remember you telling um, me about it, yeah. like right after you guys talked, and I was just like, "This sounds incredible!" And so, yeah, um, yeah, it's awesome. And here we are. Here we are. Well, I'm I'm so glad, and I think it's time to to bring it home. We'll yeah. see Let's how far it. we can get with the final leg of our journey. You have eliminated the Chilicerath spiders in the kaleidoscope caverns that came to threaten you as you found this ancient battle site where Shent warriors from long ago were felled by who knows what, maybe these beasts, maybe something else, maybe by the enormous spider that lays calcified in the center of this cavern. It's impossible to say, but you are here, you've survived narrowly, uh, you are tending to your wounds and you are collecting hopefully the treasure which lured you to this place in the first place at Miroth's guidance who urged you to seek the glint of gossamer in the darkness, the scroll case of the, the fellow Shent, Shent sage that, uh, that was uh, among this company. And so you look around, you see the remains of fallen Shent, one with a large suit of armor that is adorned with ancient filigree that glints in the light, and another that is clutching an item close to its chest. What would you like to do? Uh, let's go up to, the, I'd like to go up to the armor mm -hmm. and check out that armor, examine it. Um, yeah, that's that body up here to the north. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and awesome. As you do that, uh, you can, you don't even need to roll a check because you've, you've spotted this. This was what enticed you in, in the first place, a giant sized suit of armor that contains a fitted metal chest piece and, uh, the bind bindings of supple leather. Now it's clear that given the amount of time that has passed, you would have expected this suit of armor to completely uh, disintegrate or, or decompose away, and yet it looks as if it is in good condition, Ooh. which uh, belies the presence of magic yes. upon it. I'm going to put this in your inventory. Awesome. You can uh, also, could you unpause the game? Oh, yes, of course. Pause. Yes, I'm thank you. Move up there. Rookie mistake, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. I kept trying to Have you pause used it. this software before? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Why can I? Space bar, uh, space bar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'll move up to the north to that body and uh, examine it. There's some sort of magic radiating off of it. Um, can I do an arcana check to see if I could potentially tell what sort of, what the nature of the magic is? Are you proficient in arcana? No. You're out of your league. You're out of your league. Ignatius. I could, she says to no one. Because she doesn't know what you're doing. Jake's already there. Well, you were interested in the other, yeah, I, the other I, body. The armor's cool, and I can look at it later. But I think she would definitely go straight towards that scroll, um, heeding the words uh, of Morris. Yeah. yeah, it's this the super scroll. It's the it's this uh, sort of hunched over figure, a little bit to the south and east. Um, and you you make your way over there, and you identify a strange looking cylinder. Mm. Um, it is a metallic cylinder that has a number of what look like cogs or wheels, um, oh. Oh, chambers, cool. and it looks like it would, with manipulation, move, like it might rotate or there might be pieces of it that can kind of slide from one side mm. to another. And I'm going to uh, put this in your inventory. So it is cool. not identified, and so you will have to um, perhaps spend a little bit of time later trying to figure out what it is or what it can do. It's so interesting, like the recurring themes of these gears and like clockwork sort of mechanics, like all of that we've seen, like sort of buried in the earth, like with the meteorites and everything. And it sort of mirrors the way that the, the celestial sphere kind of operates too. It's like gives me the impression that this, this entire sort of reality has been constructed by, you know, some kind of intelligence or something. Weave. Yeah. Wow. Perhaps. Wow. Yeah, the Shent were deeply spiritual, a moon worshiping and uh, people of spiritual faith. You have more in common and, with the giants than you realize. Yeah. Wow. And their, their ways were esoteric and strange, but they did have kind of recurring themes in, in what they created and how their magic works. And you're just starting to un unravel some of those things, but there's, there's much more as of yet to discover if you were to continue playing. It's really, so. it's really intriguing. It's yeah. like a very intriguing. But I've placed the arcane cylinder in your inventory. It's uh, not going to show up maybe where you expect because it's not an item. It is a container. So it's up at the top. I see. Um, yeah. And 
there is a little bit of bug where you're going to be able to see what's in it. I was going to say, I clicked yeah. on it. It's okay. So um, that's a me. bug. That's a bug for us to. That's a bug for us to fix. I clicked on it to um, see if it would give me but, like this is a magical mm, arcane cylinder. There is a description. There is a description tab you can switch to. But the the bug with this right now is that it shows you the contents, which it shouldn't. Uh, guys, yeah. it, I'm There's not going to tell you what's in, in it. There. It's awesome. Is it? Yeah. It's pretty fucking dope. Oh. Pandora's cylinder. It's pretty OP, which makes sense why I'd have to study it to figure out how to get it open. There's a lot going on in there. Yeah, there's a lot going on with it. And you're so it's like a puzzle box. It is it is exactly like a puzzle box. Right. Like a coat. What and is it, it is codex? something that you would find uh, yeah, yourself. Like hell, yeah. If we were to continue playing this, you would find yourself um trying to figure it out over the course of many game sessions. Like oh, you're not, cool. It's oh, not just a... Cool. Oh, that's so cool. It's not just a one... It's not just a, like, you get it once and you open it and you get all the things. It opens one contain, one compartment at a time oh. and it gets progressively harder to unlock uh, further compartments as you go. That I is, love that. And also that's great design. For Amunet, she loves that. Mm. Like a puzzle, something to research yeah. for a long Every period time. Every time you're camping or downtime, oh. you'll be like trying to trying to figure out the next piece of your your arcane cylinder. She walks back to Flomberg. Look what I've found. What is this? It's an arcane cylinder. It must be full of magic, spells, information, secrets. Who even knows? It's going to take me forever to figure it out. But I, I can't wait to figure it out. We have to get out of here so so we can get back to the caravan. Yes. I want to take this back to the caravan too, unless you know what magic is contained within. Hold on, I, I figure it out. I took introductory to armor. <laughs> I may be able to discern. Before dropping you out, you took armor one hundred and one. Yes, every it's an introductory class for freshmen. covered magic armor. Yes, armor freshmen. One. All freshmen have to take introductory it's armor. A survey, survey course. Yes, not, let it's me not just even armor one hundred and one. It's armor one hundred. Look, <laughs> uh, eleven. Uh, it's magical. Otherwise, it would be destroyed. You know that much. That's that's not armor. I left before Christmas break. Let break. me have a look at it. Does it... Uh, I assume it's also very impressive in its Honestly, it's, it, it is a little bit visually adorned, but it, it does appear to be a little bit more practical than ostentatious. Um, it, it's kind of overlapping scales uh, with, with kind of leather... Um, backing? Leather backing, yeah. Okay. Um, but it's very large. Um, and so like giant size, it is or? like giant size. Oh, you had put it in my inventory and it says medium <laughs> unidentified. Uh, yeah, man, that might be another bug. We got a few things to work out with, with unidentified oh, things. So but I can't wear it. Well, I actually know. know exactly what learn, it is. Learn a little bit more about what it is before deciding. Our friend here rolled a natural 20. You just rolled a natural 20. Oh, you're looking at it. Oh, okay, yeah. I brought it over. You, I'm rifling through my notes. So you will need to identify it. And the formal way of doing that is either with the identify spell or over the course of a short rest oh, um, and experimentation. But uh, since you rolled a 23 on your Arcana check, I'll, sub I'll let that substitute. And we're doing a short rest anyway. Oh, yeah. you're doing a short oh, rest? We, did we do, are. We anyway. did do a short okay, rest. Okay, well in that case, you can identify this over the course of the short rest. And so Ignatius, I will put the, I will identify the item in your inventory. My inventory? Uh, just a moment. I am waiting with bated breath. All right, there you go. Uh, oh, shent. Breastplate. Oh, come on. This giant-sized armor consists of a fitted metal chest piece worn with supple leather. Although it <laughs> leaves the legs and arms relatively unprotected, this armor provides good protection for the wearer's vital organs while leaving the wearer relatively unencumbered. Shent malleability. This armor is lightly enchanted by ancient Shent magic and was originally crafted for large-sized creatures. While attuned to the armor, the arm the owner can change the size of this breastplate. Oh, there you by go. One size. Category. It's like the armor of Uskroth. Yes. Yes. That's great. That is so cool. Is I amazing. shall wear it. Wait, what? <laughs> now that I've come it is to a sense. It is a medium armor yeah. breastplate, which so may like, be- Is that not roguish? It, <laughs> You're it, not wearing that. It may be a little bit lighter than what you would prefer, Ignatius. I'm not sure it could be suitable for a barbarian, perhaps, but uh, Korak have their own sort of special armor scaling. It's possible that this item may or may not be a, a hit with this group, but- yeah, I, I, okay, so it's only magic is that it changes size. It's magic is its adaptability and it's slightly, um, it's not like plus one. It's not plus one. So yeah, do you want it? Do um, you wear a breastplate? I, I don't know if I can. I, I it's think very, it could, I but think it it's would light lower your compared depth. to most. It is, it is a little bit lighter than, than usual, uh, for a that's breastplate cool. of its size. Oh, that's, that's cool. Oh, that's the advantage. This is still very precious. This is, yes. this, this is like, it is a, a shard of an ancient people. 
like a, this is a, as if it were a part of them handed down to us. This piece of armor is in fact a piece of shent. <laughs> God. <laughs> What a piece of shit. What a piece of shit. What a, it, is, it is a total piece of shit. You're shent. a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll pass that on to the writers. <laughs> <laughs> Put that at the end of the description. It is, in fact, it is a piece total of piece of shit. It should be considered a total piece of shit. <laughs> you're you're never that. shaking that. Like, that's gonna, <laughs> we're going to have to change the name of the giant culture now. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. We're going back to the drawing board. Just do, just do find, replace, yeah. and the word done. Oh, <laughs> the culture is now named the ancient Flombergs. <laughs> That's all I want. They sound like giants. Yeah. They do. <laughs> the Flombergs. <laughs> all right. Uh, you've, okay. you've recovered your treasure. Do you wish to ta- tarry here more or no. investigate no. the area more? You were going to take a short rest. You should go ahead and do that. Yes. Yeah, so, it. did you guys roll your I HP? Got my yeah. uh, all right. And then I'd like to move as quickly as possible. I think that. Uh, that Ignatius is eager to find this door to the south to reconnect mm-hmm. with yes. the caravan yeah. because we still have a long way to travel before the job have, tonight. The, yeah, the party's tonight, so we It should. is tonight, and it is, it's still 5 a.m., so it's you haven't... Right, but we have no idea how many yeah. hours it's going to take you even to once the, we find the caravan. Like, right. you know. Flumber, do you want to roll down. hit dice during the short rest? You are a little bit wounded. Oh, yes. Uh, I would love to do that. Jake as well, You, if you wish... Two. Did you already roll your hit die for the short rest? I did. Now I was and down. You're still, so and you're low. still down. Yeah. So I'm. I don't know if anybody has any other healing, but I'm. I have so one. You can roll more than one if you want. I don't know if you were oh, aware oh, of that. Terrible. Two. Yeah. Would you just heal me for another three? No, that was his short rest. That oh, was uh, Flamberg's short rest. Yeah. No. If you want to roll more than one hit dice, you can. Otherwise, you can stick with what you've got. So I've got cure wounds and shield um, of faith. I can just cast cure wounds twice, right? In five E rules, and could, use yeah. both those slots for that. Yeah, the, the slots are interchangeable. It's not like a, you prepare specific spells. It's you have. Yeah. yeah. Did you roll both of yours? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll double short rest. Um, but let's see if it's gonna be worth a damn. Yeah. Why not? I don't think we're doing another short. Well, we might. I don't know. Uh, no, it didn't roll. I'd rather keep my spells if possible, but no worries if not. Roll. All right. Uh, oh, oh my God. You got Unfortunate. One. But it's uh, you know, it's a little better. Uh, all right. So you head onwards. I, I'm yep. gonna I'm gonna heal him real fast. Uh, okay. Just real quick. Uh, I will cast a level one cure wound spell. Thank you. And this is still subject to a die roll. So yeah. Let's see what we get. Oh please. Hey, eight. Oh, hey. that felt great. So soothing. There we go. Um, it f- so oh, soothing. I feel like I can take on the whole Shent army myself. <laughs> the dead Shent army. Don't. <laughs> Did you Shent hit your- were alive. I yeah. take them on. Did you hit your head? Strong. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, are you good for now, Skid? Oh yeah. Is Flumberg good? Yeah, I'm down a little bit, but I'm fine. I'm okay. Le- uh, I do have lay on hands. How many? How much are you down? Uh, I'm down. Oh wait, do I still have a plus two? You have a plus two to your max, so you are down three. Three, because I could still go up to fourteen. I'm at eleven. I'm okay. Hit points? I don't have a lot of hit points. <laughs> don't don't make fun of the poor sorcerer <laughs> that only has Real a D6 quick, hit Lomberg, How many hit points do you have? Twenty twenty seven. Twenty seven. Well, he rolled ridiculous. I, ro- I rolled his, very well on uh, the second. On and this is level with two. The, the plus two temp. I have 12 hit points. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, all right. I will lay on hands and get you to max. So that would be three. <sighs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's fine. I'll use three lay on hands and let's keep it moving. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back out and uh, keep you traveling. retreat from this side cavern that was full of these spiderous webs. Um, and you return to the region, um, and you know that the door that has been foretold as an exit should be somewhere to the east of you. Okay. Based on your prior survival role, Jake, you you know sort of where you are. You come up upon um, a notable location. Oh, and I go on. Is that the door? I think it's the door. It's at the back side of the door. I think we oh. see the back side of the door, dude. It is indeed. It is, in fact, the door. Yeah. And you have, have triggered an event here where... Oh, um, I was going to say, oh, I opened the door. Oh, <laughs> It's not quite that simple. However, um, I would also note, mechanically, enough time has passed that you are no longer feeling the effects of intoxication or 
exhaustion. Oh, that's bad. Um, that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> Although Ooh. the longer if you the longer you stay in these caverns, you might become afflicted by some other uh, bewilderment. You behold, however, uh, from the interior side a familiar giant door at the far end of the web-strewn cavern. Yes. An enormous threshold that appears untarnished by the ravages of time. Despite the lingering dust of ages and the glittering webs that crisscross its giant-sized expanse, seven crystal orbs, like in the sibling door that you encountered earlier, are set into the stone and gleam from the ever-shifting light of the cavern, each reflecting colors and patterns that remind you of the many moons of ember. The crown of the door features six finely detailed figures in a relief, each bearing staves or weapons, their forms sharp and clear as they look up towards the sky and a dark stone arrowhead piercing down between them. Mm. Mm. Say, say the words. Say the words. Touch the door, say the words. All right. So we can leave these accursed caverns. Is there uh, any orbs missing or anything, or everything's intact? Mm. Everything is intact on this side of the door. If you wish to learn any more about it, um, you can lean on history, religion, or arcana. Yeah, I think I might do... Um, oh, I have history and arcana. They're the same. Maybe I'll do, I'll do arcana, because I know kind of the history. We were told. Mm -hmm. Do you need some help? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can, if you're getting assistance, you can roll again with advantage or Joe. How do you help me, Jake? Cool. Say, can step aside. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Say. Ow. Ow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he hit me. Puts his hand. He hit me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled my hair. Pulled my hair a little. I can do this. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, he was, he's, I it's him. even more infuriating that he's right. He can do this, um, which really just is, is extremely grating. Um, but Jake Cool, yes. you use your familiarity with Arcana to notice several magical symbols carved into the stone that appear to be inert. Look at this. You realize that they don't seem to be connected to any source of power and instead are probably decorative. You piece they something together decorative. about the symbols, a pattern of divination and abjuration that is designed to protect a large group, transmutation to reform, and conjuration to move them out of harm's way. Huh. Huh. He says all that. <laughs> it's funny the things you remember. Oh, get out of the way! <laughs> she feels the door and realizes he was right. Hmm. Mm. Writes it down. All right, well, I thought maybe there'd be a trick to it, but perhaps we all touch- There wasn't to the last one, he just said You the identify words the open. figures at the crown relief of the door as Shent rebuking something in their midst. They're, the shape and the darkness of the scene seems to represent the invading force of abyssal creatures during the time of the abyssal shear. This is lore that you've basically learned at this point, yeah. but it is reinforced in the, the story that is carved here upon the door. Mm. All right. Well, all right. Puts her hand on it. Hmm? Hope. His in destruction. Look at his smile on his face. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you both roll initiative to see, to see who said it we first. We gotta resolve yes. this. Um, yeah. I'm, ro I'm rolling. Roll initiative. I'm rolling initiative. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. You who stop. said it first? There's no combat encounter. I oh. can't roll. I got, oh right, there, you go. there you uh, go. I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling before you, so I go first. Let's see who says it. Oh, shit. Oh. Better roll better than an 18. <laughs> oh, 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 we got you by one. Jake Cool. Oh, oh, Jake Cool. Oh, 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 you suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as Troy said it. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you get 75. You get, you know, most of the way through like the phrase <laughs> and suddenly just hope blaring out of Jake Cool's <laughs> mask. Destruction. Destruction. <laughs> I need to know, <laughs> Troy, I need to know what is what does your mask look like in this moment? It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, oh, in awe oh. of this <laughs> magical sight. Uh, I mean, this is what he wanted to do. It just didn't work out for him. He couldn't keep up. Oh, so he's jealous. Maybe. <laughs> he's also talented. Yes. Wow. Maybe. Those, maybe. those maybe. extra arms are weighing you down. <laughs> she slaps you. 
<laughs> Those incorporeal arms are carrying a lot of weight. <laughs> After you utter the passphrase, both of you, although, let's be honest, it was Jake. It's always Jake. The entire door shudders <laughs> Forget and it, Jake. roars to life. <laughs> the massive polished gems glow brightly, their surfaces reflecting the faces of the moons they represent. The stone slabs <clears throat> separate apart, rotating and sliding. <clears throat> Letting in air and light from the region yes. beyond. Yes. Uh, it is morning. Oh, the door opened on ah. the region map. Wow. I don't get tired of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You see the faint pre-dawn gleam of light from the verdant pathways outside as you have found an exit. <sighs> We'd like to walk through. Yeah. You may. Smell the air. I share. Here we go, walk outside. Oh, oh look at that. back on the VP. The sun rises. Back. Back on the VP. Back on the VP, verdict pass. Right. Oh, Vert look at that. Pass. You look behind you to perceive the stonework of the large cliff, uh, in the, the, the cliffside edifice that ranges from muted gray to golden brown, the dark stone crescent of the great gate behind you with carved writing now open. Nearly indecipherable from years of exposure on this side, where the reliefs on the interior were pristine and untarnished. Yes. And the verdant paths yawn open before you in the morning light, and you sense that you have found a way through at long last, but to what end? Will you return to the caravan? Will you press on to Helkas? Yes, we're gonna get the caravan. We're gonna turn, caravan. try to turn west to and get them. back north to, to see if there's a path that could lead us to the caravan. Before we okay. leave though, I know we just moved away. Um, Amunit asks the group, should we cl close the door? Seal it up again. Isn't that the whole idea? I don't know. I feel like we've, we've gotten rid of that evil that was locked behind. Perhaps it will be healthy for it to be open to the natural world. Yes, air it let, out a little. Let the monsters repopulate the area. Or the monsters. Uh, wait, the wait, animals. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, wait. Let monsters Sleeper flooded. agent. What the, Sleeper agent. what the hell did you just say? Let the monsters repopulate the He's area. He's one of them. There is a chaotic <laughs> evil We could come back later <laughs> for more experience. Yeah. yeah. We, we should can, leave yeah, some for later. We can farm more experience later after we let it. No. It's like um, stocking it, a pond Miroth, with trout. Miroth said that there's more evil, though. The Abyssal wasn't the only one. I think he meant in the all think, of Ember. Right. He, he, he said specifically these doors. that they weren't in, in the immediate area because he couldn't sense them. I thought you wrote everything down. But, but huh? notes. We will close one door and leave the other half open. Yes. That's a fair compromise. When Maeus opens one door, she closes another. Yes. We should make a window and close and seal the door. Oh, what is it you feel inside your heart? You feel we must close this door now? Or do you feel that it should be open for all to see? I feel as if it should be open for all to see, but also... All right, then. Well, I know that Sejor is going to come down this way, and I think it would be really funny to close it because she doesn't have the passcode. That's true. That's true. Close That's the door. Actually would be very funny. Roll me, I hadn't a, thought about roll me that. an arcana check. Tavra may have told her. Would be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Of course he wouldn't all. tell her. He was there. They may he, all... She was there when he told us the password. No, she wasn't. They may all be oh, yeah, she yes, was. Yes, she was. Oh, then leave it open. I'm. You are unsure, well. but I will say that your intuition gives you some suspicion that closing the door and opening it may not involve the same ritual. You're not uh, sure. It might, but hmm. there's no guarantees that it's symmetric. I try it really quick. You utter the phrase, your hand upon- Hope of destruction. Uh, upon the upon one half of the door and nothing happens. Oh. All right, yeah. Intuit that's... it that whatever rite was used to seal this place, the command phrase that you learned was a, a manner of unsealing. Uh, it's done, okay. And that, I believe if work. Muroth wanted it closed, he would have told us to close it. Perhaps you're right. I think this works. Come, let's reconnect oh, with the caravan. Shit. We may be in time for breakfast. Call Clipper. We still haven't called oh. her. Uh, what what else are they going to do? She's asleep. Let's go. 
The mayor closes the door. It's seven thirty. She's away. Orbis opens a window. Come. <laughs> you know what they say. Mayus. The closes. gleaming light of Orbis above uh, in the in the dawn light is is casting the whole region in a kind of swirling myriad pattern of blues and purples, and you sense that today is the day of dusk tide. Yes. Oh, we got to get back. We have time. Yeah. Look, look. Orbis is full. You can see it. Even you know. Day. The scriptures, what Orbis would say yeah. in, at Timaeus when he saw her. What? Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty I woman. The kind I'd like to meet, pretty woman. Don't walk away. Hey. I'm okay. <laughs> I write that down. I'm just going to keep walking towards the wall. <laughs> We're going to the wall. Stop. Oh, there it is. I shall Look recite the hymns as we walk. <laughs> there it is. Look at woman. We found the other side. Clipper. You arrive. Clipper. Horn. You approach the gathered rubble of fallen stone pillars, noting as you approach that progress has been made in your absence. Perched upon one of the stones is a small rat, which suddenly shifts and morphs into Sin Marmot. Ah. Oh, uh, no. Hey. She waves cheerfully. Ah. Uh, as she spots you. <laughs> I hit it with Jake a club. Hit it with yeah. an arrow. I hit it with a yeah. club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rat! Before, before you have the opportunity to attack wantonly. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, uh, Sin. Uh, Sin pops up and says, Hey, we were wondering when you'd turn up. I said, of course you would. Probably just had some sort of adventure along the way, but then Clipper said, no, they're definitely dead. <laughs> and I said, don't count on it, Clipper. They might surprise you yet. And here you are. Well, you were right, Sin. You were right to have faith in us. Well, thanks for having our box, Clipper. I really Clipper. should have called Clipper. Yeah, we did forget that's to call. My, that's my yeah, fault. Probably thought we were dead. Call her now. Oh, call her right now. That'd yes. be funny. It's better, Clipper! Better late than ever. She's right there. It'd be funny, though, if you did it, and then Powie popped out from behind a bush. Well, you can't yeah, see. Yeah. You can't we see. Said, like, <laughs> we're lost <laughs> yeah. some miles to the west. There's a, there's an we're out of we're inches oh, from us. Jump out of a bush. You Very can't funny. see Clipper because the only hole that has been, that is still accessible is one that is, but small enough for a tiny rodent to, to crawl oh. through. Mm. And so Sin has come through as an advanced scout. She explains, uh, so then uh, Agraban sent me through a gap and... We cleared to go look for you. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know where to start looking, so I just held down the rocks here and hope you'd turn up. Look, we got to get this cleared out. Yes. They're kind of fully stuck on the other side. Well, it's getting warmer by the minute. Let's get this work done. Yes. Ah. 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 I start like throwing rocks. We start picking up the rocks. The spirit of the Shent are in us. We start, yeah, through manual labor, just we had lifting and moving. Such an adventure, Thunderwave. Boom! <laughs> That's good, Thunderwave. You've got the the rage of your barbarian strength to clear the way. How are you helping to um, clear the rubble? I just keep dashing back and dashing forward with my cunning moving, action. Moving the rocks. It's really my quick. cunning action. <laughs> Look how cunning he is. <laughs> Speed with, it, with which he moves. Every time I think he's going to stand there for a moment, he runs. <laughs> Uh, Ignatius, then, what's your contribution? Ignatius is just uh, labor, manual okay. labor. He's got a plus three strength, uh, oh, yeah. 16 of strength. So he's just lifting and moving and following any directions uh, these guys give me. Excellent. Well, the process takes about an hour. Oh, that's not um, so bad. But it's really just three large pieces of rock that need to be tipped out of the way. It's much easier to do from this side than it would have been inside. Uh, you have the advantage of the terrain. You can use a fulcrum of some sort. You can lever them out of the way. Yeah. Um, it's it's much easier work than it would ever have been for someone trapped on the other side of the, the blockage. And so you're able to clear the way. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that as cleared. Oh, come on. It's going to be like, oh, oh my yeah. God. And it had a sound awesome. effect, too. <laughs> That's cool. Did it. Uh, hey. And... Yeah, as you clear the last of the rubble and you make contact with the work crew on the other side, there is a cry of excitement. Ah! As the gap um, in the rubble opens enough to let air and light in, Agraban's face appears in the gap, covered in dust and sweat, but bearing a happy smile. Agraban! Hey! Agraban, you were right about everything. 
it is good to see you all again. I thought you might have befallen some trouble on the way, but uh, it seems you've made it, and just in time to help us through after all. I knew I could count on you. There was something about you. I could sense it. We saved the whole world. We did. Well, we're just one caravan in a much larger ecosystem of commerce. <laughs> oh, Agravan. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You're... <laughs> You mean something else? <laughs> yes, yes. She, what she's saying is, <laughs> you didn't save the world. <laughs> we saved the world. We went through an ancient door. We talked to an ancient shent. We met up with an archaeological dig site. You, they work at the Anachronaeum. What? Do you remember your story? Just get to the point. Oh! Your story about the abyssal shear, about the attack of these abyssal creatures through... We killed the last one. The one in left. In this region. There yes. was one left. It was pinned to the ground by a great Amazing. giant sword of I, I drew a picture. I drew. And you were Show there. Show the picture. And you. <laughs> and you were there too. <laughs> Agraband is taking this all in with a kind of amazed expression as it if. He died. He doesn't know what to, to make of this. And he says, well, that is quite a tale. Yes. True, though. You'll have to tell it to me again so that I get all the details. This is going to be very popular in the Taverns of Ordain. Yes. 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 We should drink and tell you the story. Yes. yes. But first. At Helkes, though. Not move. here. At Helkes. Yes. 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 The, we have, the yes. festival. We awaits. can drink while we I, walk. I, no. I, time to lose. <laughs> 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 I began to fear that we, we would miss it as time was waning on, but it is festival is tonight. We should... We should make haste, and perhaps we can still make it in time. The winds of Maeus at our back. <laughs> <laughs> that's at least our way. That's at least the lunar partially. winds of Maeus at our back. That's true. Winds that's at least Maeus. partially true. That's actually yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> Zenith, Zenith, so. We'll yeah. be there in no time. Yeah, okay, so they start packing up. Uh, how, how long till, till we get there? He says, um, oh, uh, I think maybe... Five hours or oh, so. Oh, if, wonderful. We should well, be we there by go. evenfall. Yes. We have to go now. And uh, with that, the Strayhearth caravan will move to accompany you yes, once yeah. again. I remember when you split us off. Oh, I still remember remember that. that. I was like, oh, cool. On your journey. Um, and as Agraband um, is, is rejoining you, there is a little bit of an apologetic look in his eye, however. And he says, um, just one thing. Um, about your payment. Uh, Agraband. Here we go. Agraband. I, I am good to my word, but my coin is, is tied up until we reach Helkus. I, yes, I know. Hold your booze. Uh, but uh, all the trade goods in the caravan, they're, they're ready and waiting for the festival. And as soon as I reach it and receive payment for my delivery, I assure you a, a portion of that payment will be yours. How convenient that we're finding this out now. So you have no liquid funds, is what you're saying? Um, I'm afraid not. It, it was a necessary deception at the time. We risked our lives. Well. Payment has doubled. But, but lucky for you, we're, we're all <laughs> headed the same way, right? Interest Hel is, Hel Hel is idea. Yes, I have an idea. A compromise. We could come up with a fair amount of interest since you do not have the cash now, that when you make the sales, we could increase our take by that amount. Or we could kill you now <laughs> and take all of the trade goods <laughs> and keep all of the profit. Right. That's right. We're level it's a two. New, <laughs> it's a new side of Ignatius that's coming to the floor. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. You don't have to pay us. Let's go. <laughs> you don't have to pay us at all. I love if you a wish. <laughs> like, we do it for the, for the honor. Please. <laughs> right? I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't need any money. I do need some money. I have expenses in Ordain. We have uh, priceless artifacts on our person that we will... Right, they're priceless. We're not going to sell them. Yes, we right. will. Well, it, it's a good thing we're all headed in the same way. Uh, Helkes is not far now. We'll be there in just a few hours, and well, unless more of these canyons decide to throw themselves into our path... Let's be off. Yes. Let's be off. Open Let the out. celebration begin. Yes. <laughs> Lila, Clipper, and Chris, let's go. The, the Strayhearth caravan rejoins you. Yes. And, and you will uh, 
head on your way uh, towards Helkis. I'll let... Can I move it? Yeah, you can... I'll remove the Stray Hearth caravan, and, and since you've reconvened, we'll say you're all under the party banner at this point. Woo. Nice. Uh, I can't mm, find a way to click it. Uh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, let me move them out of the way. I'll, I'll, I'll remove that, that particular caravan. Hmm. I still can't move it. Really? Maybe I just don't have permission. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I can. Oh. An oh, it's an ongoing event. Silly, Andrew. <laughs> Don't you know how to use this software? <laughs> I have it's to, an ongoing event. <laughs> as the game master, I have to click the complete event button before ah, you can cool. move ah. onwards. There you go. Now you're off and running. It's a good way to keep your characters in line so they're not just like traveling across the world. <laughs> while, there is an, yeah, while there's an active game event, it, it prevents you from making further movement. All right, so we're making our way back through where we had walked after we came through That's the right. door to the and south. We continue to the, the south. Safe. All right. South or... Uh, we go south or east? Helkus, uh, Agravan the knows the way. Now. Helkus is to the northeast of you. North there we east. go. South would be a different path. Oh, oh no. it's raining. Uh, no! Uh, oh. the, the hallmark storms of dusk tide. Uh, yes. Oh, I see yellow. Even at this the distance from the town... moon goddess. Even at this <laughs> distance from town, you perceive a wafting through the air. Oh. The smells of richly spiced foods intermixed with a hint of smoke and the scent of falling rain. Ah, Pinpricks classic. of light from scattered torches in the distance and other flames dance, beckoning you onwards. Glancing around, you see expressions of anticipation on the faces of your traveling companions who are eager to set down their packs and rest from the travails of the road. You have a moment before reaching town if you wish to have any final conversations with the members of the Stray Hearth Company, but it sounds like at this point, your path is set. Yeah. I think just casually though, as we're going, I think um, Aminette would just talk to Clipper, just excitedly tell Clipper about everything. She's yeah. a sign born. She understands the excitement that this research would bring. Um, so she's just kind of showing her the photo, the photos, the drawings uh, and her notes. And like every so often she'll be like, right, Flamberg, right? Oh, yes. Yes. And then she'll dive back in. Clipper is fascinated. Yeah. Um, Clipper says, um, this is amazing. You've had the biggest adventure and you didn't die. I, I'm i sorry for doubting you. I uh, am a little bit cynical sometimes, but um, wow. And you found these historical things and hmm, I wonder what that's worth. And Clipper starts immediately appraising some of your belongings with a trained eye. Mm, helpful. Hmm. She also says, um, about the, uh, stone, though, um, can, can I have it back? Oh, of course. Uh, Ignatius? <laughs> what? Could you give Clipper back her, her, her stone? You didn't lose it, did you? Is that why we never called Clipper? Did you lose it? I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I kept telling you I forgot to call. <laughs> I, was so but I, was, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Did you lose it on the first day? <laughs> well, right after the initial call, yes, I was you startled put... by a squirrel that had run past. I <laughs> jumped in alarm and it fell into a river. <laughs> I tried to get it quickly, but it washed away. Clipper, I'm sorry. Is this truthful canon or are you being... Deceitful. I was, just, I was yes ending Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. Lies the stone is gone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so bad. Who has the stone? <sighs> All right, I have the stone. <laughs> 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 I thought it was fascinating. It's really incredible. Here. Well. Yeah. Oh no. That'll cost three thousand. No, wait. No, it's there. Oh, I left there. it. On the I left it over there on the rock. Do you wish? And he like walks. Away. Are you are you hopeful to hang on to it? Is that is this what you're angling for? You can you can roll a persuasion check if you want. Mm. Well, I thought perhaps, <clears throat> perhaps I thought if we um, reached Ording, mm. and we had an opportunity to uh, perhaps. Uh, sell or get some monetary reward for these uh, items that we had found. I would very much like the opportunity to um, purchase your stone. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that if I had these when I 
arrived in Lumec, if and when I find my daughter, I would like her to have it, because I know we will be separated by the natural course of the, the battles, and I wish I could stay in touch with her. Um, it's like putting her on your phone plan. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, Of course you can have your stone back. I'm sorry. Roll a persuasion check. Okay. Whatever the price, Agrabah will pay it. <laughs> <laughs> he owes us. He owes us. <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh, Natty 19, oh. dude. Wow. wow. Natty 19. And, you know, he's got some charisma. He's a yeah. paladin. Yeah. So, uh, 21. Flipper looks at you appraisingly and says, I feel for you and your tale. I hope you find your daughter. Unfortunately, these stones are an essential means of communication for me and my business, but perhaps a compromise. Maybe I will leave one of the stones with you. Give us a way to keep in touch. You've found some remarkable artifacts in a short time. Perhaps there's a business opportunity here. We could find someone who's interested in purchasing them, or maybe you'll find other treasure along whatever path your journey takes next. I'm always looking for new contacts that can supply the caravan. I think she likes you. <laughs> you think so? It's pretty obvious. Ask her out. Ask her out with the stone. Say mm. Use it. the stone to ask her to be super, yeah, yeah, super cute, cool. Like a great meat cute story. Say something cool like I'll, I'll stone you. Oh. I'll stone you sometime. Walk away. I'll stone sometime. <laughs> 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 I'll give you a stone later tonight. <laughs> What a pickup line. <laughs> oh. <sighs> you want to get stoned? <laughs> get stoned? Oh my God, he, he said it. <laughs> um, uh, no. It's like love, actually. <laughs> His, uh, um, I think that's a. Gr I think that's an excellent compromise. Thank you, Clipper. It's very, very kind of you. And yes, we shall stay in touch. Should I make it to Lumek? I'm sure there will be many things of interest there to you and your archaeologists. Mm. I'd like to be able to help. And perhaps with that, I can find the money I need to get my daughter and I back home. For I only have enough for a one-way trip. Do you know where to find her? I don't. I need to get in country and, and then start asking around. Well... If we make it to Ordain, are you traveling with us all that way? Yes. I'm to, I plan to take a ship from Ordain to Lumek. I can introduce you to some folks that might be able to help. Thank you very much, Clipper. I appreciate that. With that, Clipper leaves the stone in your possession. And Sweet. the caravan company together <laughs> plan to begin the descent downhill towards the Vale of Helkas in front of you, and as you survey the town from afar, you come around the bend and you see it ahead of you in the distance, about one mile uh, down oh. the road further. Oh, so is this is this a new, bi a different biome? Not yet, but it's just you, the, uh, yeah, it looks totally yeah, different. You, you see, it is you're at the you're at the boundary. Oh, between, we're in Helcus. You're in Helcus, oh, and you're oh, at, I see it now. You're the, at the boundary. Oh, go back. Oh, wait, oh, go, go back. back. Go oh. back. Who did that? Go that back. was Troy. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, it was me. It was me. I'm going to take it out for a smoke. I'm going to take you back to the town. <laughs> Just um, going out for a smoke. <laughs> the, the rocky canyon walls of the verdant paths begin to recede as you spy something in the northeast. This is as you're coming into town. Yes. A tiny mountainside settlement is flanked by one of the most captivating skylines you've seen. This modest frontier town is marked by a sprawl of Arcturian houses and buildings surrounded by the ossified corpse of a colossal worm-like creature. Oh, wow. Which I wraps see it in the art. I was like, what is that? around and above the settlement like a petrified sentinel. The gaping maw of this long dead specimen reminds you of the entrance to a cave, and you can't help but notice various mine workers and railway lines crisscrossing the landscape's perimeter. This must be Helcus, home to the Leviathan Mine and the Dusktide Festival. 
your caravan's destination awaits. Yes! You make it into Helkas, and I'm going to reset the time uh, of your arrival because of the extra, the extra move. But... So it should be fifty. Uh, it should be six, four thirty in the afternoon. I believe. Does that? Did I advance? Did, three, I, did I rewind 30. it? Oh, oh, did you already rewind it? Then yeah, I did 4:30. rewind it. It is four thirty. Yeah, now. I that did rewind sense. it. It should be four thirty. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. four thirty in the afternoon. We made we made good time. Yeah, great time. Yeah. Yes, um, it's happy hour. <laughs> it is. Is it two for one until six? <laughs> it, is, it, it does seem to be happy hour, and the burgeoning Dusk Tide Festival in Helkas is just getting started. You've arrived at the perfect moment to uh, embark at the beginning of the festivities, and you arrive at Helkas, and I'm going to bring you in as I start the event here, to the vista <sighs> and to the festival oh, yes. that awaits you. Oh my gosh. As the, the storm clears as you roll into town, the late afternoon weather, the moon's high in the sky, the people of Helkas happy and bustling with excitement as you are beset with a wondrous display of mirth and merriment beneath the ossified eaves of the sprawling Leviathan. Ugh. Townspeople meander to and fro between bustling market stalls and holiday attractions, and the air is full of scents, both bittersweet and succulent, along with the sounds of rural music and lively chatter. Perhaps there's time enough for you to participate in this opportune revelry yourselves. Yes! Yeah. Long and strenuous travel through the Forest of Stone. You have earned another milestone point for reaching Helkus. Not Ooh. enough to advance to level three yet, but you're well on your way. Awesome. Um, but regrettably, this is the moment where we are going to have to no. leave it. No! no! The Dusk Tide oh, Festival. We just got to Helkus. <laughs> I know, I was gonna talk to just Lila arrived. there. And <laughs> I mean, I'm looking. It. Do you, if you move, rotate the map around, you can see the moons. You can see them up oh. in the sky. The artwork looks beautiful. Anchorist oh. is present. And look, as you Flippers move, it has, the... it has depth. So, like, the background moves differently. Oh, it does. There's, like, yeah. layers to it. The further away it is. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, what? These little details like that that really just yeah, make it crazy. pop. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. I also see, like, a tent where they had, like, a bizarre tent with clothing and fabrics. I'm like, shopping montage? Yeah. Yes, oh. you can... There are merchants, there are festival games, there are attractions. Oh. The whole joyful gameplay of the Dusk Tide Festival is something that you'll have to experience on your own or or in a, in a next uh, in a next time. But uh, yeah. we'll, oh. we'll yeah. leave it here at a happy wow. moment rather yes. than yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the conclusion of one leg of your journey behind you, but much more yet to come. If you were to continue your gameplay in Ember, the Dusk Tide Festival is just the beginning. Uh, there are things that happen. The, the plot advances. Oh, cool. The end of chapter one moves into chapter two, where you would have the opportunity to venture further into the open world of the rest of the Arctis Plateau, the whole uh, landscape of the game unfolding ahead of you, your own choices to make and your own paths to, to chart. Um, you experienced two quests along the way. One was the main quest of reaching Helkas. Not quite finished, because there's some gameplay at the festival that we didn't get to, but um, the main quest of reaching Helkas and the side quest of the Lunar Temple, um, those are two examples of quests in our game to give you the sense of the scope of the narrative. There are 40 quests in Ember, um, wow, so wow. you've experienced a, a tiny fraction of what Ember has to offer here, um, but there's much more adventure to yet to come. So awesome. uh, for those of you who watched uh, this four part series, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much to you all, uh, the, the wonderful GCN crew, cast and uh, crew backstage as well. Um, it's been amazing to, to be welcomed here and to have the chance to share Ember with you. And thank you for being so kind and enthusiastic and excited about what we're making. And I hope that excitement translates into, you know, what people are seeing uh, on the Kickstarter page and thinking about supporting the project. I think this is something that's really exciting and new and a different, yeah. a different take. I don't know anything like on, this. There's nothing, RPGs. We've, yeah. there's nothing um, like this. Yeah, this has so, been so amazing yeah. for us. We play a lot of RPGs. <laughs> yes. yeah. And there's just nothing like this in, in terms of this presentation. There's We're trying like to chart this. some new ground and I, I hope that people will consider supporting the Kickstarter you know, both because this would be a tremendous experience for, you know, anyone who backs to play, but also, you know, if there's anything you can do to sort of show support for trying something new, trying a new format, trying uh, something that hasn't really been done before. Um, 
So yeah, I, I hope there's there's really something in Ember for everybody. So yeah, yeah. check out the page, check out the video, um, pledge if you can. If you can't, help us spread the word. And I can't wait to see you all. Maybe at PAX. Yeah, PAX. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, yep. we'll see you there. We'll recap yeah. how things You're gonna have a booth. You're gonna have a We are gonna have a booth. Buy the yeah. booth. Yeah. So swing by, by the, the booth. In, by the booth. In Philly in December. Swing by the booth. You'll get a chance to see Ember there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So if you're coming to the Philly show, mm-hmm. like swing by the Foundry booth, you can yeah. see you play Ember. Get Check some it out. Foundry swag. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that we'll we'll leave it here for now and just thank you all so much both you at the table everyone in the audience and it's been a blast until next time farewell thank you thank you andrew thank you andrew Andrew. Andrew. bye everybody